and welcome back to the Section 10 Podcast, episode 480, presented by Underdog Fantasy. It is the home of your 40 and 35 third place Boston Red Sox. My name is Jared Carabas, and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Coley Mick, and he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Tyler Milliken, and he killed his dog, Bullet. And you can't teach that. Bada boom. Realist guys in the room. Steve, how you do it? Ooh, what up, what up, Section 10 in the building? In the mother fucking building. Presented by Blue Moon. Suck one. Suck one. Produced by Jake Yazzie. Fuck yeah. And it's a fucking sweep for the Red Hot Red Sox. Open up the floodgates. Because here come the guppies. Here come the catch guppies. Here come the catch guppies. Here come the catch guppies. You want to let the water flow? You want to let the water flow? Well, guess where here comes the catch Right behind the water is the catch guppies. Here come the catch guppies. They're going to get one win. They're not just going to get one win. They're going to get two wins. Jake, one more time. They're not just going to get two wins. And after that second win, you know what they're going to do? You know what they're going to do, Jack? They're going to get that third win. They're the Canadian ketchup guppies. They're blue. They're the blue ketchup guppies. No one ever sees these. They're poisonous. They're pissed off. They're angry. They want the ketchup. They need the ketchup. And they got all that fucking ketchup up north. The great north, as they call it. Toronto. Toronto. Toronto, Canada. Uh... Is Tough night. Really uh, rough night for Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> the six is burning right now. What Anyone else happened in the Toronto? country? Anyone in the country wearing a red bee hat tonight is just taking the back of their heel and just <laughs> fucking stomping on that city. Jared's like, what the hell are we talking about? I don't know what's yeah, going on. No, he gets it. <laughs> he, he gets it. I I don't I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Toronto. But I do know that the Sox have won five straight games. I do know that. Uh, I do know that the Boston Red Sox are red hot. I do know that baseball in Boston is fun again. It's been the it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, I think uh, this is a situation now where shout out Hogdale by the way. Whoo! Oh yeah, you got that hog. Beautiful man, yeah. beautiful man, shout right there. Hogdale merch. My twin. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm. This is something for me. I'm just very excited to have baseball that i'm into baseball that is quality uh the fans are excited for the first time in a long time and it doesn't feel manufactured doesn't feel forced like we can actually be uh excited right now so uh again i'm gonna revisit something that i said last week where i was like i'm very cautious like i don't want to get to the point where i'm expecting the red Sox to win but we're kind of in that weird spot where it's like they took two out of three from the Phillies. They took two out of three from the Yankees and they just swept the Toronto Blue Jays who are not a good team, but like, that's what they should have done. But like, sometimes they don't do that. Like against the White Sox, they split with the White Sox. Like that's a team that like they should have handled and they didn't. So now I'm just cautiously getting into the water of, you know, feeling a little comfy. I don't know. Are you guys comfy? Yeah. Yes. Because you look at where the Blue Jays are right now. They're now four and a half games behind you, and they're the closest competition behind you in the wild card race. You have four and a half games between you and them. You've kind of created that divide. And between, you know, the Royals kind of scuffling lately, losing two in a row, you're trailing the Twins for the second wild card by two games and one and a half for the third wild card. You were right in that mix for two wild card spots now. It's not the last one you're just holding on to, and the competition behind you is way behind you now. You kick the fuck out of them. Hey, you could be a game out of a wild card spot by the end of us recording. The Royals are losing right now in Oakland. So, yeah, I, I think That'd it's be three straight. I, you can never guarantee or expect a sweep on the road. I just I don't care where you are like that, especially if you're the Red Sox, who's a team that's obviously hovered around 500 for most of the season. The biggest thing I'm doing now, Jared, you allude to how we're looking at the team a little bit differently now. I am just so pulling for the guys in that clubhouse because there was a certain part of the season earlier on where I was a little conflicted of like, well, if they play well. That almost justifies ownership not doing what they should be doing and, you know, adding more pieces, living up to their side of the bill. But now it's like, you know what? These guys are fighting. 
These guys are fighting. They're all a group. They're all close. They seem tight knit. They seem to be enjoying playing with each other. And they're whoa, now finding whoa, a rhythm. Whoa. Not like that. Not like that. Like that. Like, like that. that. It is kind of like, like that. Please tell me they're playing with each other, man. But it's hey, they're just they're at a point now where it's like, this isn't just playing decent ball. They're they're hot. They are the red hots right now, and we gotta respect them. It, it's the outside look, right? Like you know, I mentioned it on Twitter earlier today, what they have done in June. Entering today, you know, you're first in batting average, first in OBP, sixth in slugging, fourth in runs. Awesome. What you're doing in June. Your overall rankings now in terms of your offense, what really held you back in May, you're fifth in MLB in batting average, fifth in OBP, fourth in slugging, fifth in OPS, first in the AL in stolen bases. So now your offense is kind of putting itself easily in the top 10 conversation right there in top five, where you can argue back and forth depending on where you are, hot and cold. And everything rotation and bullpen wise is top five or six. So your elite is stealing bags in the American League, the best team there is. First time you're on pace to lead the AL since 1935. There were eight teams in the AL back then. So elite at base running, hitting the fuck out of the ball, and pitching great, which we've seen for a majority of the year. And they're second in the league in vibes. You, did, you forgot that one. So like that's huge. Put that at the top that's of the huge list. right now, too. Like the results overall, and that's not even mentioning the run differential where they're easily in a playoff spot if you compare them to the rest of the AL. This feels very real. I don't know how you look at it any other way right now. Uh, I also don't think it, it lets ownership and, and the front office off the hook moving forward because they've been in this spot, as Tyler's alluded to, the last two years, relatively speaking, and then they did nothing. They just punted. Yeah, you put more pressure on right now, then it's like, oh, okay, are you going to once again not care uh, about what the team is doing? This streak you're on right now happened in July last year. That's the difference. Now you sure. hope with more time you're able to, you know, cement yourself but you know six seven eight games above 500 i think it's hard to expect anything more than that as they continue to get hot but maybe that's a gear they unlock with abreu and casa shout out to abreu who went deep at triple a twice tonight honestly the key this year can you be in playoff position when the deadline comes around the deadline is in 40 days from right now can you have a playoff spot by then because then it changes things a little bit again they could be a game out the royals are like three and seven in the last 10 go it I, this isn't just a Red Sox issue. Why wait till the fucking deadline? No, I know. Now? I'm just saying they probably <laughs> will. Pressure. It's likely that no, they would wait until sure. they have the most info possible. I'm just yeah. Everyone does, but you like like you said, they're by the time this comes out, they'll either be a game or two games behind yep. that that yeah. last wild card spot. You know what will make it easier to acquire one of those wild card spots? Not punting, what's that, 35 games? Something like Dude, that, 30 games? Teams are allergic to pulling the trigger in late June, and I've never really Crazy. understood it. Now, I understand that the asking price is they are probably not where you want them to be, and you assume you need that next month to go by to get them there. But if you really want to make a push, you really want to make a move, you get an extra month of that guy you need. <laughs> like Just yeah, bring him, bring like, him well, on over. You, you was this not around the time? You, you guys are pissing off. Tyler's going to be he, so mad because we want to acquire He's salivating Tyler. at the idea <laughs> of selling this entire team off. And finally, everyone has some value. And now you guys want to add to the team? <laughs> if they keep playing like this, I'm not going to be hurt. I can't be hurt. I, like, I'll be excited. I'll be for it. And to Coley's point, two years ago, it was Jan or June 27th, the Mariners, when they went and got right. Carlos Santana, when the Red Sox needed I help know. in the same exact spot at the time. And Santana ended up being a big boost for them down the stretch just because he was stable. You know, they didn't win the World Series, but they made the playoffs. Like, is that this, was a big difference. Is this not around the same time? They pulled the Castillo trade before the deadline, too, didn't they? I think it was like two weeks before. Okay. I, I want to say it was a couple weeks ahead. Yeah. Okay. But no, I mean, it's, it's the same concept where it's like, how bad do you really want to? Where was it, Tyler? It was actually July 30th. Okay, so it was two seconds before the deadline. Uh, that yeah, I thought it was much that. sooner. I could have sworn it was it was earlier than that. But yeah, um, no, nah, dude, they 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 look fun. They just look enjoyable. I got to say, and not jumping ahead here, after the Celtics win the title, and I'm sure a lot of people would agree, watching that next game that next night, it's just as a fan, it's hard to, <laughs> it is hard to lock back into like, all right, now we're in the regular season in June in Toronto. Let's not go, me. Sox! Come on, man! I disagree. Like, yeah. I, I, it felt it like took the me some, it, to me. it took me some time to lock back in. I'm not going to lie. I'm never going to lie on this program, but no, uh, no, no, they, no, no, they no. did their part. They did their part in getting that sweep. Yeah. Well, listen, 
things are going on. You know what, Jake, how are you feeling right now about this Red Sox team? I know you, uh, you, congratulations again. I mean, I know I've been congratulating you all week on winning the NBA title. Um, but how are you feeling about your Boston Red Sox right now? Yeah, a lot of wins recently. It's been a pretty good week. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm feeling really good. I was checking the schedule after the game, and I honestly don't see another loss on there. I think we might win out. <laughs> yeah, forget the rest of the, so the rest of the season. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. Yep. It's looking pretty light for the, the rest of the, what, 90 games they got. I, I would agree. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. Tyler, I know that you must be upset about all this adding at the deadline talk. I'm sorry to upset. Whoa, oh, you're going to shake your head? You're going to shake your head? No, like you have because been if they play the into it. Oh, spare me, Jared. You couldn't stand this team two weeks ago, okay? So let, let's right. not start jumping down right. my throat. I was right. About what? They weren't playing good ball. <laughs> now they're playing good uh, ball. Yes. Who's louder than me? About Those are the conversations you have. Those are the conversations you have now. I think the other conversations, and maybe they're negative, but is slotting in who's going to be kind of the odd man out as Abreu comes back and you figure this stuff because David Hamilton's hitting. Emmanuel Valdez, oh my God, hitting, hitting, hitting. There's only going to be room for so many guys, especially against righties to play. I think some interesting decisions, and you're going to see how the organization really feels about some guys soon. <sighs> and you like know a Masataka Yoshida. Can you, wait, you know what, Tyler, can you compliment me? Say something nice no, about no, you? No, no, yeah, compliment me on my growth. You know what I'm talking about. Your growth. Mm -hmm. On social media, tonight. You quote tweeted it. Oh, wow, yes, I did, and I was so shocked. I... Okay, it's like half credit. This Can is kind of what I do before, with Bob. Sometimes you, it was a backhanded no, 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 compliment. No, no, no. Before, you, before you say anything on this, I have a very strict rule here. On Section 10, on Twitter, if you suck, we're going to say you suck. Mm -hmm. You can suck and then be good. A player who sucks oh. doesn't always stay suck. So Dude, when it's like you half suck. The team this year. Yeah, when, David like Hamilton. David Hamilton, perfect example. When you suck, we're going to say that you suck. I'm not, I mean, you know what? I'm not even going to speak for you guys. For me, if you suck, I'll say that you suck, but then if you start playing good, I'll be your biggest cheerleader. Dom Smith, the man is a, has, has been on fire with the bat. And you know who's complimenting him? Me. I'm Go Jared. Ahead, I'm, sh I'm shaking my head because. Why? What's up? No, it, no, in, a, in agreement. That oh. normally is not something you do when you agree, but you I'm more down I, with that. It's just a classic. Yes, like, yes, dude, this is a, I'm shaking my head. SMH. That's a negative reaction. SMH. That's what I'm, I'm saying. You're supposed am, to go up and down. He went side to side. I am yeah. SMHing the people you're talking about. I'm SMHing the people you're talking about because that is a constant thing on the social medias where it's like, oh, no, you said that something can, especially over 162, something can be right in the first 30 or 40 that is not right in the next 30 or 40 games. That's something that does not get through a lot of people's heads, but it's a valid point. Thank you. I just Bale's got to stop throwing stuff in the ground, though. Just stop slamming you know stuff I on the ground. I feel like you're jumping ahead a little bit. Sorry, sorry. I feel like you're jumping ahead a little bit. Sorry. I feel like you're jumping ahead a little bit. I take it back. I feel like you're jumping ahead just a little tiny bit. Oh, sorry. Know? What did you just woof over there, Tyler? Uh, I'm just looking at some Dom Smith numbers, and they are... Oh, they turn you on a little bit? Pretty damn bit? impressive. Right. What Do you want I, me yeah. to give you what? You're getting a little horny over there? The month of June is going to get everybody a little little chub right now. You ready? Mm-hmm. 289, 426, 395, 820 OPS with the 139 weighted runs created plus. Not bad. Dom Smith or striking out 17% of the time, walking 15% of the time. So you'd say he's... I'm not going to say I haven't given some stats on Dom Smith when he's been swinging the bat well, but you got to acknowledge it. I, I just know, and I'm not trying to discredit what he's doing. That's not... I'm, I'm, let me get ahead of this. But I know there are some Mets fans listening right now like they're these fucking idiots are falling for it. Like, this is not a rookie. This is not William Abreu. This is not a guy with a short track record. He's filled in admirably for Casas. The second Casas is back, thank you for your services, Dom Smith. Which is... Exactly. And that was the point. That Right? That was the point. It's like, hey, do your job. He's doing his job now. We can't for complain sure. about that. Two weeks. You need two weeks. You're hoping for July 2nd, right? And even if you want to go back to May 15th, he's still been above 10%, you know, in terms of league average as a hitter. So I don't know what more. Obviously, the defense, he's had a couple games where it's gotten really weird and his brain has been gross. But for the most part, <laughs> he's covered that for you. Brain, a gross I, like, I don't brain know. is very funny. It was. Gross it's just doing funny. some of the craziest shit you've ever seen in your life. But Classic gross for the brain most part, activity out there for Dom Smith. Yes, like he brain had, uh, rotting, clearly. He had a play this series. I don't know which game it is, but it has to be jumping ahead since I don't know. 
where Rafi threw him a ball that took him a little off the bag, yes. but he like got so far <laughs> off the bag to make sure he caught it that he would then run back. I was just like, listen, I'll take that. No, I'll I take know. that every day of the week. I thought it was like a good throw and he just like, I got to run off the bag. It was a fine throw. <laughs> it was a fine throw. on the bag. Like, what is he doing five feet off first? That wasn't that bad. It was a full sprint, <laughs> full sprint to the bag. Whatever works for him, you know, David Hamilton's going to take 17 steps to get it to first. Yeah. Dom Smith has to take 17 steps to get off first, corral the ball and get back. That was a, just try not to get it hurt. was a gross brain kind of play by Dom Smith. But we hey, we got to give him even more credit because he's a reason why we're not watching Garrett Cooper. So it's double <sighs> positive here. for dig, Big dig. Big Dom, Dom Smith. <laughs> big dig Smith. And you know what? Dig bomb Smith. Uh, you know, not to jump ahead, but I, oh. I think Bob did something decent in this series that eventually, eventually we'll touch on. Mm-hmm. He did kind of fuck it up afterwards, but hey, I'll acknowledge hey. the beginning part. Jesus fucking Christ, this kid will never learn. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, he can't help himself. He can't help himself. I complimented you on Twitter. You didn't even care to engage with it, uh, which it's okay. I it's cool. I didn't see it until like, you know, I feel like every tweet has like a five minute shelf life. People are going to think I'm a, just a fan of you. Like, I'm someone who's just tweeting well, at you true. for yeah, We know that. You never listened to the show before. So yeah, yeah. Listen. No one would ever mistake you for a fan. <laughs> this kid's actively <laughs> listening to yeah. a number I'm not going to say. Yeah. I was listening to 310 to left for a long time. <laughs> oh. Suspend me. <laughs> Fucking throw me. I don't give a fuck. I'll, I'll go down the list. I'll start naming every sock like podcast that's ever. Existed. Could you not find the button? What just happened there? Nah, I was no, it's about not it. as fun when he begs for it. Yeah, yeah I, know, like, I know, I know, I know. I'm begging for some underdog fantasy though. Mm-hmm. Begging for it. The MLB season is in full swing, and underdog fantasy wants to make it a lot more interesting. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Playing their pick'em game is as simple as selecting higher or lower on player stats, strikeouts, total bases, home runs, and so much more. Make entries of all baseball or mix and match across your other favorite sports. You can win up to 100 times your money, and it's a ton of fun. Uh, are we going to be able to <clears throat> uh, get some action on the home run derby, the wiffle ball home run derby, Jake? Definitely going to be having action. Um, we don't know the specifics yet, but we'll okay. obviously blast that out we'll when we have people it. In. Action, That's- nevertheless. It's, there's going to be action. Uh, mm-hmm. For anyone that doesn't know, we are going to have a wiffle ball home run derby uh, in Dallas, Texas for the All-Star game. Did we confirm publicly that Tyler Milliken is coming? Tyler's coming. I think we just did. I'm, I'm going to be there. Tyler confirm. Milliken is coming to the All-Star game. And not only will he have a bed in the section 10 baseball is dead content house but he has a spot in the home run derby where the winner of this home run derby receives five hundred thousand dollars of pat light's money pat light is personally writing a check <laughs> and offsetting the taxes. So it is technically it's a eight hundred and seventy six thousand dollar donation from Pat. The winner of the home run derby takes home five hundred grand courtesy of the light group. Uh, the lineup is as follows. This is not the order of appearance. This is just who will be in it. Uh, me. Dallas. Jay Hay. Joey, Jake, Steve, Tyler. Uh, and the last spot goes to Connor, who is our uh, social guy for baseball is dead, who is a college baseball player. So everyone is kind of sleeping on him right now. Uh, he could end up taking home the 500K uh, courtesy of the light group. So awesome gesture, by the way, to offset the taxes so that like the take home is the that's 500K. huge. Yeah. Oh, it's just that's huge. a nice guy move. It's yeah. what he does. Do you see Pat? commented on our latest uh, upload our latest podcast yeah what he say he's the, he's the top cool. comment Is he donating more money in there let me see i don't want to misquote million. him <laughs> he just the yankees lose if this comment gets 100k likes i'll buy jared a bar and has 308 likes right oh. now so please go like how it. many likes I really does need it to keep pushing 100k 100k so we're getting there. all right we're almost oh, there we're cruising we're almost there make sure you sign up with the promo code jared j-r-e-d 
to get up to $250 in bonus cash and a special pick on Underdog. That is Underdog Fantasy. Promo code Jared. <sighs> you guys want to talk about this series? Let's do it. Well, Socks. I mean, we can if you want. Damn. I don't want to quite yet. Thrice dubs in a row. The SETI and T Dog show. Nikki P shoved ho. Socks hot as the sun. SETI's knocked in 41. Masa pouring done. Vote Duran. All star. Since Valdez returned, rock star. Who's dead? Blue Jays are. I like that one. That last one. Series of Tycoons by Tyler Milligan. Yeah, I like that last one. Yeah, that last one. Thank you. That last one cooked. Couple. That last one ate. That, yeah. that, that last one was bussing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Got a lot of tweets that that should be nominated. Not forcing it, but putting it out there. Yeah, that for Tycoon of the Year? Yes. How many have been nominated so far? Three? Four? Right, five or Three six. Three or four, right, Jake? No, oh, definitely not that track. I think it's in the five range. Ah, I don't think I so. I think you nominate one basically every time. No, I don't. Jake? No. No, no I don't. Jake, like how many do you think I nominate? Time. Every other time. Oh, I, I'm taking the higher. Ah, uh, I think I'm taking the under on six. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the under on six. I'll take the under on four five. and a half. Yeah. I'll take the other four, one on six. Four, four and a half is a good line. Four and a half is a good line. Four and a half is a great right, line. It's right, it's right around there. Okay, I'll take the higher. Yeah. On four and a half. All right. Well, you're going to... Yes, Tyler. A lot of people didn't like the first haiku. They felt like it was pretty weak. Mm -hmm. I thought thrice was a pretty unique way to frame three. I agree. But apparently I used it incorrectly. (laughs) I mean, well, yeah. (laughs) Can you read it again? (laughs) Saying it like it came up with thrice or something. (laughs) Thrice, dubs in a row? (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean. Red, it would have been like Red Sox dubs thrice. Yeah, I don't know if thrice dubs in a row comes off the tongue the right way. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy I recovered. They're way better than they used to be. Thrice dubs that's is nice. I don't know. Uh, that doesn't rhyme with show or ho. <laughs> they don't fucking have to rhyme. That's Holy, true. they <laughs> like when they rhyme. Stop getting an attitude over it. I've had these conversations uh, with people. They don't like the non masses. That's not how real artists work. Mm. You tell them what they like. They don't tell you what they like. They're fucking idiots. I care about what the people want and I want to feed them what they want. No. If I went to McDonald's and I got fucking Burger King, I'd be fuming. You'd get but they BDs. dictate the menu. You didn't tell them what to put on the menu. You're getting. I'm gonna act like I didn't hear you're that. You're getting dildo burger, right. and you're gonna like it. Yeah. Give me all the dildo. Dildo burger. Shout out. Clip that, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Jeremy? <laughs> oh, yeah, Jeremy's here, just lurking, huh? What up, Jeremy? We should just shout him shout out, out at man. some point of every podcast. J Dog. I appreciate Jeremy a lot. The original J Dog. That was a great episode. Where were we? Chicago. <laughs> I think I I was in Chicago. <laughs> And Jake, I think, was dying in the hospital. Hospital, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jeremy filled in for Jake, and T Dog just tried to get way too comfy with Jeremy too soon, and he called him J Dog. And Jeremy was like, "Don't fucking call me that." <laughs> <laughs> like very direct, but he didn't even wait. There was no like trying to become friends. But now, yeah. me and Jeremy, who's the one who thought of him before anyone? It was me. I'm sorry. What? Like on this episode? I- Multiple episodes ago, I said, shut out, Jeremy, you guys didn't even know he was here. I knew it was literally the last episode, quite literally, this week. I, I'm going to go two episodes back. Jake, what do you recall? You didn't say it on the podcast, so I feel like it doesn't count. Oh, I didn't? Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. so people don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. No one has any idea. What you're usually about. don't. Mm. When I tell you that I, like, I was at the airport on what was that tuesday monday tuesday monday Monday. and my flight got delayed for about 45 minutes 
And I spent that entire 45 minutes just rewatching the dildo burgers for like 50 times. Just <laughs> I, <laughs> laughed out loud every time. Like I was in public by myself, like no one around, just cackling at dildo burgers. What a when second. you mention it, I, I tried. I was like, I'm going to try to shake this. <laughs> You guys kept that, going. I think that's Coley why. And- that's why I, I kept going, going was yeah. because I could see Steve was laughing about it. And I knew that that's what he was laughing at. And then like these two fucking dildos were talking about like <laughs> launch angle and exit velocity. And I was like, no, 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 no. We, we're not just You're gonna like, let dildo burger. No, slime. it's not dying like that. Yeah, it's, yeah, this yeah. Is that's not the end no, for dildo no, burger. No, we're we're swooping back around real quick. <laughs> Shout out to the uh, whoever the follower is that. Got a burger at McDonald's, crossed it out, and wrote Dilto Burger on it. That was that was awesome. It's gonna be the new name, so just get ready for it. Yeah. Yep. Game one of the series was uh Nick Pavetta versus Yusei Kikuchi. Um what? Someone just laughing. No. What are you laughing at, Tyler? No. Nothing. What did you oh Kuchi Tyler? Again, hold on. No. Speaking of last, what, what are you speaking guys of framing hold on, me speaking as? of last episode, because I was doing an ad read, so I only heard it. Not until I went back and watched the episode did I see Tyler Milliken take a glass of water. First of all, you like poured the water into your beard, so like, like that was my first observation. <laughs> That's not how that works. Yes, you you took the glass of water and you like, and like some of it went in your mouth, the rest of it went down your chin, and then you're like. <laughs> <laughs> the water went all over your desk and what's crazier is you had a towel right there why do you have a towel right there what do you mean behind me you you coughed water all over your desk and all you had to do is turn to the side and there was a towel right there to clean it up why do you have a towel right there it's just for you know random liquid or whatever may be happening this is a room uh, where the there's a lot of things that. going on you need to wipe things down sometimes uh, what <laughs> Can't be jerking uh, off during the like, show. Liquid. Yeah, I don't oh. like how you said random liquid. I, I think that could have oh. easily been like I spill water and you know the thirty cokes a, a day that I drink or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Random liquid. I can't do that. This is wow. a family show. This is a fam. People, people have been tweeting us uh, videos of them like fathers, mothers watching the ten with their their single digit age children and we've got this guy yes steve i just wanted to say real quick and jeremy i hope i'm not uh i had my finger up first uh jeremy i hope i'm not jumping ahead here this is more of a hat tip to you jeremy came up with an awesome idea to have a section 10 pod out of context twitter account and that's where stuff like tyler's puking out water and and Mm -hmm. reactions to the show are gonna live those clips obviously we love putting those out there so they're gonna be housed at, at Section 10 Pod OOC. Shout out to Jeremy. It was his idea. So, Tyler, that clip's going to be everywhere. Tyler? You ever heard of a multi purpose towel that you use for different things? It's not for releasing fluids in, but I eat in my bed all the time. I do a lot of things in this room that, you know, I sweat. I sweat walking around. Sometimes you need to wipe your forehead while you're on fan graphs or watching the Red Sox. You don't know what I'm doing with this towel. And I'll be the first one to say who has been more open about their activities involving jerking off than Tyler Milliken, who talked all about the socks and the laundry detergent back on Name Redacted all the way, you know, years ago now. If I was busting nuts left and right, I'd be owning up to it. This towel next to me is strictly for safety precautions. That is all. No, Thank see, you. this is what Steve and Jeremy are talking about with the other account. Like everything you just said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was gold. Right on there. I mean, keep cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. Oh, he's doing it again. He's busting a nut. <laughs> there he is. No nuts have been busted. <laughs> During the show, Tyler? Oh, my God. Look at what he's doing right Coming now. Out of his We're not shoes, making this, this thing. Both of my hands are up here. Okay. There's nothing well, going on. they are. Jeez. Oh, you for sure know how to come without touching it. Let's not let's not even pretend. <laughs> just got my feet wrapped around my dick right now. Oh. <laughs> right, game one. Keep it moving. Yeah, Sox win seven three. Yes. Win seven. <laughs> Something wrong with you, my guy. Something wrong with you. You're the one talking about the towel. 
I just I'm had always... to bring it up. What I didn't even know the towel was in frame. Uh, you had to use it to wipe off your spillage when the Milliken family choke hole. Uh, when none mm. of you guys can swallow. Uh, that was I'm another part shocked. where he tried to blame it on genetics. Like we didn't give him yeah, enough shit. For, like we just let that slide. <laughs> Hand up. Who comes out of everybody here? You think from the worst genetic yeah. line? If we're being that's honest, that's a tough word to use there. Uh, game one. <laughs> genetic line. Who comes? I Who didn't comes? know where you were going with that. Game one. Game one. I'm always shocked when Big Cooch can like throw 99. Like that's all. It always catches me off guard. But he clearly didn't get his. Requisite 18 hours of sleep before this start. The man was getting shelled, shellacked by everybody. Who is getting shellacked? Cooch. Oh, big, big cooch. cooch. Yeah. <laughs> the cooch, He's been really good the, this year. The too. Cooch was getting waxed in Toronto. <laughs> but hot wax. Hot, hot wax. Seven innings, nine hits, three earned for Pavetta. Um, did give up the home run to Justin Turner. I was happy for him. Hmm. That's got to feel good. Perfect spot to give it up to him. Game's over. Here you go. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, it's been a comeback tour of former Red Sox hitting homers and it's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, JT made me the saddest though, hearing about how everything played out over the off season. Well, yeah, that did upset me. He couldn't have been more open about wanting to stay here. And I mean, if he did stay here, is that the best thing for this team right now? Like, I feel like it's, I don't know. That's, yeah, the way, the way that he. You heard the rumors. What were the like, rumors? when they were trying to move Massa and trying to do some of those things, I think that's what the thought was. That's why Cora told them to keep waiting for as long as he did. But when it became clear no one was going to take on that money or they weren't going to make another deal, go chase what you want. And he had more interest this offseason than he did the offseason before. Mm-hmm. All right. I feel no way about Justin Turner. Like, he was here during a down year. He was good. Like, he wasn't bad. He's still good. But I don't... I'm not like, I can't believe... we Of all the people we fucked over, he's, like, so low on the list. Of people I, to care I gotta about. say, of a guy that only spent one year here, seeing him in the New Jersey gave me similar feelings to other guys that play for new teams that have been here for a while. Like, he made a, a huge impact for one year. He squeezed a lot in, not just on the field, but off the field. So how that goes, like Tyler's saying, the stuff that we hear about how the offseason went core being like deals not coming. It's more just sad than anything, but it's not like, damn, we should have like hindsight's 2020, but it looks like now it wouldn't have changed much. It actually probably would have been worse if they kept them. No, I mean, it would have been helpful. Like Garrett Cooper never would have been on the team. Yeah, that true, sick, true. But but outside of that, like once Casas came back, I'd be like, now what? No, I know. Do do? He's hitting what two thirty or something. So, because yeah. even with like we could talk about uh, Moss's actual production, everyone on the team still seems to fucking love him. No one can talk to the guy, but he everyone has a big smile on their face when they see him walk on by. Yeah, how do you not? Like that's what we said right. like a few weeks ago. I, someone was like accusing me of being like comparing him to Crawford and uh, Sandoval. Oh. I was like, no, like it's it's in the pantheon of bad contracts for the Red Sox. Like he's been fine. I said he's been fine. I didn't say he was bad. I didn't say he sucked or an abomination, but it hasn't worked out, which is fair. But uh, <clears throat> I think when you look at a guy like Massa, he is someone that his teammates enjoy, someone that the potential is there. And it's, in my opinion, a little bit too soon to say that uh, it couldn't work out, but it's more just it's the fit, right? Like they made that determination coming into this season that you are not going to smell the grass ever again. Uh, I think the eyeball test last year, no one, no one here sat here last year and said, get this guy out of left field. <laughs> no one no. said that. Like, I feel like we've had that thought about David Hamilton in short. The eyeball test would tell you like, hey, man, like, like the first couple of months of the season, this is not working out. Um, <clears throat> but that's kind of what the, the issue is with Masa is you know, when Rafi needs a day, guess what? You're you are on the bench like you're not better than Rafi. Uh, you're not going to play defense. And like, it just is what it is. I and mean, you have this log jam at first base. Like we've got five first basemen. Like we're going <clears> to <throat> like David Hamilton can't play shortstop. Rafaela can, but Hamilton's hitting. Well, now Hamilton's going to DH like they need the DH spot open because Massa 
is not David Ortiz and he's not J.D. Martinez. Like he's not a good enough hitter to occupy the DH spot and have someone else lose plate appearances because of it. That's all it is. I think that's where you're going to get the answer. I think we know how the organization feels. Craig Breslow has told you in as many words that Yoshida is not what he envisions as a DH. He wants someone he can play in and out of spots, feel comfortable being versatile with. Those are all the things he kind of used in that. And listen, yeah, I agree, Coley. I think needing a middle of the order bat, I tend to lean in that camp as well. But Yoshida, unfortunately, he's neither of those things. Like right now, he doesn't seemingly fit either. And when you look at what it's going to be against righties, you can't take any of Abreu, Duran, um, Abreu, Duran, or Rafaela out of the lineup. David Hamilton's one of your best players right now overall. You need him in against righties. Do you want to take Emmanuel Valdez out against righties? Like you yeah. start to do the math. It's like think pretty hard to see where he plays. I think Valdez, as much as I like his bat and his pop out of all those guys. Yeah, it's Valdez. Like, I, I don't think it's, I think it'd be stupid to pull the court as weird as it says this early on Yoshida. Like I, at the end of the day, he does see more pitches and he puts up, even if the results haven't been there yet, he puts up tougher at bats. Valdez, they hit one to the moon. So it's a terrible day to be making this point. And overall, I like Valdez. But I don't know that, like, how many more options does he have? Is this uh, the last year? He, yeah, uh, I think he actually might have more than that. I think it's just tough because we know the Red Sox really do like Valdez's bat. Sure, I do too. Open it, especially Cora, right? Uh, he has two more minor league options. So okay, so that's kind of where I'm at then. Room. Like, I, as good as he's been, he's been better since he got sent down. Maybe if we just keep sending him down once a month, he comes back and he just evolves every time he comes back. Jamie, Jamie Westbrook, Yoshida Jamie is Westbrook just like... Tonight. Everyone homered tonight. <laughs> Willier will hit two. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. at that point, Coley, are you saying Rafaela back to shortstop in those moments? That's how you'd kind of line it up. Yeah. I mean, the what's what's helping it right now is Grissom not really being a, a factor. Once he comes back, I also think you could just kind of leave him in Worcester the rest of the year and restart that whole process again. Now, if this team falls out of contention or anything like that, you are so right-handed uh, short, which doesn't bother me, but I know the team it bothers. Uh, that's where it becomes more of a question because his defense has been the best outside of Hamilton at second this year. So that's where it's just like, yeah, but having him around is probably for the best. But if it's, and this is going to hurt certain people, if it's Grissom versus Bob, for instance, I'd probably rather just give Grissom those at-bats. I wouldn't, but. I know you wouldn't. Yeah, no. I, I think that's Dolby. just where Bobby things are going to get hard. <laughs> but at the same time, it's good problems to have. The fact that you have this many people you want in the lineup on a day to day basis, like you, there were times this year where you didn't have enough people you felt were even, you know, barely AAA quality players to put in your big league lineup. But Valdez over his last 15, it's 300, 400, 575, 979 OPS. For he sure. He's been one of your better hitters and one of the more clutch ones. I agree. You probably do that just to, you know, preserve depth. You don't upset Yoshida too much, but you wonder if the offense goes cold, if they kind of lean back in that direction, if they need offense pretty quickly. Sure. I don't disagree with that. But right now, Yoshida's been playing and the offense isn't going cold. Yeah, he's, he's no. kind of just like, I'm not saying he's I'm not saying it's built on his back. No, it's, like, not. It's, not. <laughs> he's just existing in a lineup that's doing better than we probably expected right now and that is continuing to perform. So, if anything, if the Sox were sucking right now, I think we're a little more upset about what Yoshida is doing. He's hitting 153 since he came off the IL. You obviously want to give him a little more time. We talk about where he is in the contract. I crunched the numbers. He's 29% of the way through the contract. So, obviously, it's not a huge sample size, but it's like a third of the way through the contract. You'd want him to have more at-bats and more opportunity to prove himself. But like we're talking about, there's other guys that can probably do a lot more with those at bats than he can. So it's you kind of go back and forth every time it comes. Just personally, every time he comes up, I'm like, oh, right. Yoshida's on the team. Like, I still have that feeling every time he steps in the box. And I kind of wish we were a little further ahead at this point. Well, I just can't. Im- I, I don't know how this year. Oh, yeah, I, know, I, last year. I mean, he does still feel new. He is. Yeah, he does still have the new feeling, but it's. Yeah, he's just he's got to get he's got to get more time. It's a weird situation. The stuff earlier this year was kind of weird. We're going to know more as the season goes on, obviously, about how we feel about him and, and how the organization feels, even though we kind of already know where the organization's at. But it's I, I kind of just wish it was a smoother situation right now than it is. I also think it's just a tremendously and I know Tyler wanted to say something. I think it's a tremendously 
short sighted idea 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 to who that was like a Remy right Kennedy. there. Kennedy, <laughs> Kennedy for a second. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a very short sighted idea to sign like a beloved player out of Japan and immediately trade him in a year. Yeah, like that. If and you're then who do you to trade him to society, anyway? That, I mean, that's that's the other part. Sure, but I, I'm just thinking like if I'm. Like, we already know most Japanese players want to stay closer to the West Coast. So trying to lure them all the way over to Boston has, like, we were in in Yamamoto discussions, money-wise or location-wise. If we're trying to get a Sasaki or or Mm. anybody in the near future and they see us treat Yoshida like shit, and they can't say, oh, that was Haim. Haim loved the guy. That's this regime. They can't do that. I mean, there's obviously the performance element of it where it's like, hey, he, you know, our hands were tied because he wasn't living up to the expectations. Oh, yeah, if he sucks, I think that's different. But if you don't even give him a shot, yeah, which yeah. is kind of what it's looking like right now. If you're trying to lure more Japanese players, obviously that would be on the negative side if you're just shipping them out of town. Yeah. Right. Jerry? What did Rusne sign for? 72. Oh, my God. 772. Oh, that's, was oh. it six? Six or 72? Was it six or seven? I mean, I think it was worth it for what he did in Pawtucket. Sure. Yeah. No one denies like, that. That like, where would Pawtucket be as a community <laughs> without Rusne Castillo? I mean, they lost the team like when he left. The right? second he retired, <laughs> the fucking team was like, "Well, we can't go on." Uh, yeah. So easily the best player we've ever had. Shut it the fuck down. That was it. <laughs> he played ten games for the Red Sox in 2014, put up a 157 OPS plus. It, it was, was electric. It was, was an electric. He game. came into that season. That was the BBC outfield. He came into that 2015 season with a guaranteed spot and was just terrible. <laughs> just absolutely unplayable. It is funny. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you guys think of awful Red Sox contracts, Rusne does not come to mind for me, even though it's obviously no. terrible. Like there's there's no denying it's one of the worst contracts they've ever had. But he never pops in my head. When I think of him, I'm like happy, which is you know, it's it's the impact on the the city of Pawtucket. Any any contract less than a hundred, I can't really get that upset over. Like, I just can't. I, Especially that's that tough. era where they viewed money a lot differently. Right. Like that's I, I like, think, this is how they should be viewing it. Like, oh, this we fuck this one up. Send him to Pawtucket. That's like, it. Go sit down <laughs> yeah. there. We're just never gonna friggin' talk about it. We're not gonna address it. He's gonna clearly be upset, like permanently. But we just don't give a that fuck. That is the funny uh, thing. He was essentially there as like, a, let's see if anyone notices that we just gave him this contract <laughs> and sent him to Pawtucket. Maybe everyone's gonna forget we even did that. I, I know they t- just owned up. They were like, we fucked up on Jose Abreu. We wanted <laughs> to like kind of do right. something similar, and it just didn't work. Hands up. On us, we're yeah. idiots. But moving on, I know we've talked about this on the podcast before, but one of the saddest things ever, and I don't know if Tyler, maybe I don't know if you remember this, uh, but Rusne Castillo, the entire time that he was sent to Pawtucket and off the 40 man, uh, he had an apartment like across the street from Fenway and would drive to Pawtucket every day because he was like, one day I'm gonna make it back to Boston. And I believe in that so much that I'm going to live in Fenway and never, it never happened. But hey, God, the way that you're reacting, it bucks. sounds like you don't know that, Tyler. I didn't know that. Yeah. Now I feel so bad. even worse. So bad. But like, they did that with Alan Craig too, where they were just like, sorry. <laughs> like, sorry. It just isn't working here. Enjoy getting taken off the 40 man and living in Pawtucket. That's crazy. I didn't know he was making that drive every single every day. day. Have you seen, speaking of things that are sad, have you seen the pictures of McCoy? Oh, it's depressing. I it, saw it somebody like did a, a video. Someone did a no video last year. Lawn. He does like this guy, this TikTok guy does videos on like abandoned mansions and stuff like that. And he did one of McCoy. Definitely look it up. I think it's just, just type in McCoy Stadium. I think it's the first thing that comes up. Very sad, especially I don't know about you guys, but I spent some birthdays there. Like, you know, went there obviously a lot as a kid. And it is uh, a depressing sight right now. It's very depressing. It's very depressing. And it's it's what Rusne left behind. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> wasn't Anyways. depressing when he was there. Uh, it also wasn't depressing. I have Nick Pavetta stats. Uh, didn't I just fucking read them? What? All right, go ahead. If they're... <laughs> last four starts? Yeah, go ahead. Nick Pavetta, last four starts, 347, ERA, 375 FIP. 
We're getting some consistency. Obviously, he had that one rough one against Philly, but looks like Nick Pavetta's starting to get his feet underneath him a little bit. Hell yeah. Well, uh, Tyler O'Neill, <clears throat> hell, hell of an opener in Canada. <laughs> Canada, eh? The state of Canada. State of Canada, our favorite state. Tyler O'Neill, a couple bombs. Um, Pierce, I mean, it's it's kind of crazy with Tyler O'Neill. Like when he'll get hurt, he'll either be gone for a month or he'll be gone for a day. You just never know. You never know. But uh, luckily, he is healthy, and uh, I would imagine he would garner some votes for Clark's catcher series MVP. I don't know if it's he enough. He kind of had. He had the way to take it today, not to jump ahead to the third game, but that, the fact but... that Raffaella ended up sitting, it was like, all right, run with it. He didn't run. He walked. Or actually, he didn't even do that. I don't. Stood still. The series was already won. But you won today, so it all factors in. From... Definitely. However, I, yeah. I don't know that anything happened in this game that made me change my vote nothing i'll say this because alex gora had some quotes that that pointed me in the direction of my vote not jumping ahead uh nobody on the, on the boston red sox was the impetus to this series just want to add on tyler o'neill real quick our guy ob called him to which i people I have been strongly calling him think is just not available no that, people that have been is... calling him to <laughs> it's t dog that's what his nickname is. No, you're is. Tito. No, no. You're Tito. It got dropped in their Red Sox Winter Weekend trailer. They were calling him T-Dog. Who was? People but walking hey. up to him. I don't know. Jared, confirm? Uh, I was frozen. Confirm what? <laughs> <laughs> were people calling Tyler O'Neill T-Dog? Uh, I haven't heard that. I've heard people call him T.O. before... Uh, this series apparently. T- Terrell oh. Owens is just oh, too wait, big wait, a deal. Oh wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out, time out. Because did I see this on Twitter? Like someone called Ty- uh, Tyler O'Neill T Dog, and then people yes! people were tagging you in it. Where was that though? That wasn't recently. Winter weekend. Oh, this guy. Oh, going back to the start, day one type shit. Day one. Damn. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess. Um... I guess, yeah, I guess he's T-Dog. I guess he just got cocked. For him, it's okay. Yeah. I agree with Steve. He cannot be T.O. No. That's so taken. That is, like, big time taken. T-Dog's taken too. I get Tyler. I'm looking out for you, Tyler. You're T-Dog. I do not look at Tyler O'Neill as T-Dog. That's you, brother. No. He's a full name guy, if I've ever yeah, seen Yeah, I'm fine one. with Ty- just Tyler O'Neill. He- he's a very business-like. He's you know, more ripped than anybody. I am Tyler O'Neill, damn it. I think that's what he should be. Or Captain Canada. <laughs> uh, honestly? I've heard worse. Tony L? No. <laughs> no. It was an option. I was throwing it out there. Hey, hey we're all this giving is ideas fine. right this now. This is a safe space. No judgment. I just don't want him to have your name. I think you are T-Dog. You've been You're T-Dog. T-Dog. We called each- we've have... been calling each other T-Dog before Section 10 got back together. Like, you, t- I start, come on. This is yeah, not Tyler O'Neill. Right. You were T Dog before he even got here. Yeah, you heard that, Tyler? That shit's yeah, mine. Yeah, because he's listening. Listen up, Tyler O'Neill. Step back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Coley, uh, in this first game here, the yeah. Kenley boys, Oof. I mean, the Kenley boys got dialed up in this one. And, and where did we finish? <laughs> up. <laughs> Always. <laughs> never, it's never, never a question. Never. Down. It's never a question. Did you think for a second that you might be down in this one, though? No, I mean, by this point of the game, I was very locked in on a different game. And that's the benefit mm. of having Ken Lee Jansen in the bullpen. It's like when, which, by the way, shout out the Red Sox, who have played a major factor in every Celtics championship going back to 1968. The Celtics have won, or the Red Sox have won every closeout game going back to 1968 for the Celtics. Good stat. It's a great stat. Someone tweeted at me. I did the research of looking back to June 17th, 2008. That one was correct. I said, we're riding with the stat. We're riding with the rest of the stat. Uh, so when I got the, the notification that this went final, 
thrilled. I knew the Wait, Celtics game was over. I, I for sure did not watch the last couple innings of this game. What? So I didn't even know Jansen came into this. What was it? Bases loaded? Yes. That's what pissed me off. Brad Keller couldn't get it done. He pulled a Caleb Orr, which we saw multiple times last year. Just finish the fucking outing. I feel like Kenley, I don't know if he's cursed or what. He gets pulled into these situations more than any other closer I've ever seen where he has to get one out or two outs because they're you know, garbage time relievers can't get the job done. It infuriates. Was it that me. bad? What was that it? Two guys stuff. on? It became a save situation with the guy on deck. Yeah. Two guys on 7 3, and we're bringing Kenley in to get an out. It was that bad? Did it feel that bad? I would have let it ride. Yeah. I would have let it ride personally, but whatever. I can't trust Brad Keller in any situation. I think AC did the right thing. Well, it's another reason for you guys to stay up, the uh, Kenley yeah. boys. Yep. Yeah. I'm okay with this when Kenley's you know, usage isn't bad. Last year, when he was pitching all the time, this is how we got to the point of dealing with injuries and those problems. One time, okay, when it becomes a frequent problem, then you're in trouble. Kelly, well, he also just had, what, like a two-week stretch where he only pitched on Sundays. So, like, he's exactly. pretty rested. Like, the Kenley boys, he was touring with the, the Larry O'Brien. Uh, he yeah, was doing all right. that stuff. So, he's he's ready to be up. Yeah, he was like, but I, think about- I was a champ before the Celtics. Like, I don't need to watch that game. Put, <laughs> put, me, in, put me into this game. He still has that zero road ERA, too. Still is not giving up one on the road. Impressive. Oh, I don't the know. result of this, though, he wasn't available tonight. Now, you got by. You were lucky, right? Off you didn't tomorrow. need it. But well, at some point, it costs you somewhere. Right? I don't like, know. It, I think they, especially with the, and I'm, Tyler's jumping ahead, and he almost got me to jump ahead. Jesus Christ. Sorry. This is Jesus Christ, dude. I did jump ahead there. You're right. Sox went 7-3. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> game two of the series. Uh, Tanner Houck is very critical of himself after this start. Um, it. Uh, what did he say? He, he's like, my stuff was flat or something like that. And the slider was mid. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. Mid, he called his slider funny. mid. Yep. Um, uh, five and two thirds, six hits, two earned, three runs, uh, five strikeouts, a couple walks, 103 pitches, 71 strikes. Uh, what what kind of info did you have on Houck T-Dog? Nothing too crazy. It's just, once again, the comfortability with the splitter. He's throwing it 30% of the time now. That's a pitch he leans on more and more. And as he should, it's one of his better pitches. Uh, I do think, though, the big thing for me was five and two thirds. Shortest outing of the season. He's done it three times. That's still like his worst outcome. The worst version of Tanner Houck is getting multiple outs in the sixth inning regularly. That's just crazy to me. That's become his reality. But he does it again and again. You know, the walks, he was a little behind guys, especially early on. But if this is the worst version of Tanner Houck you get, that proves why he's the top of the rotation starter. There's never these blow ups anymore, these short starts. No matter what, you're going to get innings. And that's what the Red Sox need. He hasn't given up more than three earned since April 12th. Like this is consistently and this is how I judge a really good pitcher, by the way. If you can still get the job done to that extent that he did in game two when you're not on, when you don't have your stuff. When your slider is mid, like he said, I'm going to have to see that clip. That's funny that he said that. I'm just always impressed. And I know, and Lou, it's, it's great having uh, Lou on the call. I'm always impressed with what he said. It's that comfort he has with chaos, with chaotic situations. He'll have ducks in the pond, and it's as if it's just bases empty, two outs, nothing going on. I, I don't think a lot of guys have that. And he gives that. That approach every single time he has that mentality every single time. Now, it didn't work out when he has that, you know, ground ball that goes down the line with two outs. I was hoping he would get out of that situation, but still impressive start. And he's continuing to stack these up and stay as one of the top ERAs in baseball. And you can say he should have had six scoreless if all does doesn't make the error to start the six. Yeah, true. He would have been through. And credit to Alex Cora and them. They're giving him an extra day of rest again, which is important. I think they see the value in it. And. With his stuff looking a little flatter in this start, this is the time to do it. He's now 10 innings short of last year's total. So if you're talking about Tanner Houck maybe hitting a wall and the stuff playing down, maybe this is something they saw and said, hey, you know, this isn't quite to the level we see you when you're at your best. Here's a day. Take a breather again. I think this is just going to be a very frequent like thing to keep an eye on through the rest of the year. And hopefully it doesn't turn into anything more. But when he is your number one guy, that's a big deal. Second best ERA in the American League. Heel has got to get rocked one of these times. This is a little ridiculous. He walks Nine too and many one guys. with the two oh three. Yeah. What is that? I'm just yeah. waiting to look at the ERA list and have him at like two eight one of these days. But until then, 
Hauk is behind him still. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this game uh, featured Zach Kelly, who is the reigning Clark's Ketchup Series MVP. I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, I don't think he's going to repeat. And it's not because he didn't do a good job. It's just, I, you know, it's, I just feel like it's going to be a new uh, winner this time. He liked our post, by the way. Hat tip to you, Zach Kelly. Loyal he follower. Did. He did. Um, Bernadine. He's been ridiculous. What? Zach Kelly? Inning in a third. Yeah, no hits. This month alone. One strikeout. Didn't walk anybody. It was nice. Uh, Bernardino. It was a bounce back. Got a couple outs. Gave up a hit. Uh, Slayton got an out. And then Coley. Kenley boys. <laughs> the Kenley boys. Up. Uh, yeah. Yep. A lot of hard hit balls from Kentley in this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got to keep you on your toes. You can be up and still be like, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> he's got a flair for the theatrics. Uh, he doesn't play. Like, well, it's the fun of just going up there and striking everybody out. You know, anyone can do that. The funny thing is that Hauk is very comfortable in those situations. Kenley just looks like he doesn't give a shit. He's like, I, I know, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but just fuck off. I'm going to do it and I'm going to get out of this and everyone shut up. That's how he kind of carries himself out there. It it sucks when you stumble into a bit and then he's immediately out there in a 4-3 game. And it's just like, ah. This would be a terrible time for the bit to be immediately explode. Like it can't have it today. We also but, shout out to Jeremy. He had the promo ready to go. I was like, if he gives up, if he gives up this right here, we're not. We can't post. We can't post the Kelly boys. But we stay up, so you yeah. could post it and did. Yeah, especially on the road. Yep, he's Never so did. up on the road. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's only four saves away from K Rod for fourth all time. Crazy. Um, what else happened? In, what else happened in this middle game? This what eighth inning? I thought it was one of the best moments of the season for Alex Cora. Uh, just overall how it all played out. So David Hamilton had got hurt in the previous game, did not start in this game. O'Neill obviously hits the homer to tie it in the eighth, three three. After two outs, Dom Smith single right. Cora pinch hits David Hamilton. He goes in. He steals second. That's when Sedan Rafaela comes through with the game winning hit. Great move. Having Hamilton off the bench, getting him in there to go and steal second for you, and then immediately getting that as the winning run. Raffaello, who just seemingly, if there's a big spot and you need to make contact and put the ball in play, he does it over and over again. 41 RBI leads all rookies right now, and the Red Sox. One of Cora's better moments this season. Is Raffaello not like a favorite to an AL Rookie of the Year right now? Who am I missing? I know there's Luis somebody. Heel. Mason Miller. Heel. Heel. Luis yeah, Heel. Yes. Yeah, freaking is he Heel. Still Get a him rookie? out of here. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's at minus 125 to win rookie of the year. Okay. And even if we're talking Rafaela, like Warren, everything, Willier Brave is ahead of him. Rafaela's well. eighth. He's plus 3,000. No, I know. I, I may or may not have put some coin on him last month. Uh, at plus like a million? <laughs> like what was? I don't know. If he's going to lead the league in, or not the league, if he's going to lead the Red Sox in RBI uh, and then also play premium shortstop and oh, center yeah. field defense, I understand the war argument, and that's where the voters are going to go. If the Red Sox do make a playoff push and he's going to play as many games as he plays this year, especially with William missing all this time, I don't think it's that crazy that he, especially when Steve gets his wish and Luis Hill is pushing a four ERA going into September. It's gonna happen. I don't think it's that crazy that he'll he'll be in that conversation. Abreu shouldn't be that far. Abreu's plus five fifty. There shouldn't be that big a gap between him and Rafael no. for rookie of the year odds. I wanted no. to. I'm gonna jump behind. I'm sorry, but just because we're talking Rafaela, he's got this like he's got like a Cunha swag to him. I'm not I'm not comparing mm-hmm. him to Ronald Acuna, but. I just sense a lot of similarities. The bat flip he had in that homer in game one. He did the little like hup two step thing to third. We talk about oh, bat flips. Time. We talk about guys that like pimp homers. I think that's my favorite home run thing. When you, I like when Tatis does it, little like rewind and then step on third base. That to me is like the sexiest home run thing you can do. Then he's just making catches like we talk about all the time. Just looks so easy. They're not easy at all. Flipping the ball behind his back to the to the shortstop there. I'm like, 
This guy, he's just so smooth and confident, and it's not cocky, which is always a fine line when you have confidence, but you're not doing too much. Just loving every. He hit like 714 in this series. It's crazy. <laughs> I think for Raffaella, too, it's the adjustments at the plate with the hands, uh, you know, the leg below, uh, the kind of leg kick he has down there. There was a great article put out by Jen McCaffrey kind of labeling it all and why you're seeing some of these players, especially the younger ones, take a big step forward right now. They are no longer doing this big generic meeting where they kind of talk to everyone the same way. They're now doing those meetings very shortly and then doing a lot of one-on-one stuff. And apparently a lot of guys, Duran has talked about it, um, but for the young guys trying to figure out how they slot in, they feel like it's going a long way for them. So for the people that get after Pete Fozzi and talk about how much he sucks all the time, because you know, you go back a month ago, it was all over Twitter constantly. Credit to him. These are the kind of breakthroughs you're happening, and it's multiple young players. Hamilton, Rafaela, Valdez, whoever you want to throw out there that are producing, even Duran, and you know, we'll get into him in this final game. They're all leveling up. Connor Wong as well. Credit has to go somewhere. I guess you have to go and give it to him. I was never one of those guys saying fire Fatsy, but I think if you said that now, you kind of feel die. Are you sure about that? I mean, no, you never you never said fire him, but I, you were never his no. biggest fan. I think I said last offseason, if I he was... I didn't say fire you know, him. One I of the said people stuff him into back. a trash can and launch it into yeah. the sun. Yeah, I said, <laughs> no. I said kill him. <laughs> keep, his, keep, his, <laughs> keep his job, but you know, definitely leave the stratosphere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was never a fire guy. I, I was more uh, indifferent. In space. Do it from yeah. orbit. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let his family eat, but I don't want him on the planet anymore, right. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I, I don't think that you were uh, an advocate of his, T-Dog. No, I, I was never a big Fatsy guy, but I also See, was I never am. like, oh, I he am. needs to get fired. I just thought he was fine. I am an advocate. Uh, I've heard uh, many glowing compliments uh, about him from guys who have worked with him. That's all I, I can go on. I mean, I, been... I, I've never personally worked with him, so I can't I can't speak to it. But I, I can speak to other people who have complimented him that have worked with him. Yeah, he's well liked, seemingly, especially, you know, to be on Alex Cora's staff, you got to have some kind of credibility there and to fall in the shoes of, you know, Tim Hires like he did. But I think for Fozzi, this is a sign, hey, I'm working with a younger group. Maybe the way I approach things with veterans before doesn't work with these young guys still adjusting to the big leagues. There was an adjustment made and it's been working. Um, but no, I would never throw myself in the camp that I was saying fire him. I just thought he was, if you look at Andrew Bailey as someone who dramatically makes you better. I looked at Pete Fozzi as someone who's fine and you know doesn't make you worse, but keeps you about the same. Just wanted to point out a quick typo to Major League Baseball. You guys have Rafaela hitting 251. That's incorrect. Yeah, he's hitting mm-hmm. 212. So if you could just update yeah. that real quick. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And so that must make Valdez at like 276, right? Uh, yeah, I'll do the math on that. <laughs> 39 he's points. He's chasing Ted. Uh, Valdez is now Ted. at 244 because he gets the 39 points that Rafaela just lost. <laughs> okay. When Emmanuel Valdez hits 407, we'll all remember. Yeah. We'll know exactly where, where we are when he hits yeah. 407. Not, not to jump ahead, but I do want to give credit to Will Fleming, who 1,000% called the Valdez home run tonight. Insane. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah. Insane. We, we got a group text with uh, the 10, Loomer, and Will for like during the games, which is funny because they're calling them. <laughs> and and uh, Will 1,000% was like, smelling a Valdez tank right here talking about a, like a 186 hitter and he just put one on the fucking moon again not to jump ahead this isn't the third game we're still in the second game yeah he said uh, Valdez is about to hit one to the CN tower and then just bang impressive what's also great is it shows you just how big of a gap you are uh, from actual live watching Nesson that's not even a Nesson oh, thing that's just TV it's about a minute and a half <laughs> I had enough time to get over my computer to start cutting the video um but I don't know. I think with Rafaela, I saw a lot of people saying like, oh, he's still striking out a ton. If you look at his June stats, it's like 31%. Over the last week, it's down to 21%. Now, I do the strikeouts. If you're striking out over 30% of the time, it's going to get you eventually. But he's like not, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, like, not, if, yeah, you're right, Steve. Talk. If you're watching the games, he's like not. That's, that's he's not. This is stupid Steve Definitely analysis the last here. Week. But like... Watching the games, I just don't I just don't notice the bad stuff with Rafaela. I only see the good stuff, and I think he's like the greatest player ever. So glad we got Swaggiest him. Swaggiest player on the Red Sox. Very true. I think both can coexist. Yeah, uh, you can K and still do a bunch before. of good things. Like, yeah. I don't know that 
like the the hit, the changing of the hands and stuff. He's tried to do this thing a couple times. Where he's like, I'm going to take pitches. And then it's just like he has no reason for why he's taking them. He's just taking them because he thinks that's what he's supposed to do. Like I, he's never going to be a 15 percent walk guy ever. You know, what no. I mean? it's not what he's going to do. So I'd rather him be free swinging, because especially when you do have a guy on third and the pitcher can't really try and do these wipeout sliders and stuff. He has to be more safe. Yeah, if it's near the zone, he's probably going to put a, put it in play. He's not going to K in that situation. I think that's where the problem was when the strikeouts were climbing because he just wasn't making contact as much. Now those stats, you're striking out 21% of the time. He's making contact way more. The 7% walk rate, I don't believe in him sustaining that. Just no. don't strike out. When he puts the ball in play, good shit happens. He's fast. Let the athleticism play. The player he is right now, where you know he's still you know roughly 15, 16% below league average as a hitter, He's very valuable, even at that. And this is rookie year. What are we seeing in a year or two? Even if he can improve a little bit off of this, you're going to feel more than fine with that contract. You will never think about it once. He's. You just hope he can run into a, a JBJ type ALCS. You know, or when even JBJs get one fucking hit. Like if he can do more, <laughs> more than but that's that. these last two weeks. If you he sure. can do this and get crazy hot, it's possible. That's Sedan Rafaela. Rafaela has. 36 RBIs and 72 at bats with runners in scoring position. Like every other AB with a with Rispies, he's driving a guy in. So the fact that he's already got some clutch stats that really look good, I'm not gonna lose sleep over some strikeouts. That's just not it, happening. In regards to Sedan Rafaela, I know he's still very young and he's still getting used to hitting at the big leagues. We don't think that this is what he is, right? Like, do do we because I'm high on him offensively. Like, I think he's already kind of drawing comparisons to Jackie Bradley Jr., where it's like, oh, he's just a streaky hitter. Like, you know, he'll have a three week period where he's he, he has like a million hits and then he'll go a month without getting a hit. I think it's got to be somewhere in between. Like, I just feel like as he continues to get experience at the big league level, this is someone that's going to hit, I don't know, 250, could even flirt with a 800 OPS. It's just like, I'm not going to. I, I'm not I'm just like not dumb enough or naive enough to expect that right out the gate. Like whoever he's going to be as a hitter is not who we're seeing now. But I just think it's super encouraging that he does have these hot streaks where it's like three hits tonight, four hits tomorrow, three more hits here. Like it's you know, it's it's something where I think he can build on it and work towards consistency. Like that's that's the key would be cons- being a more consistent hitter. For me, it's like. JB, they're they're both two fifty hitters, but JBJ would get all of his in a week and then take the next three weeks off in a month. Rafael is going to go one for four every game. That's more where it's like, yeah, he'll get his one hit a game where JBJ necessarily would. And I fully expect Rafael to drive in more guys than Jackie Bradley Jr. I just looked it up. JBJ in his seven full seasons with the Red Sox averaged fifty RBIs a year. Rafael has already got forty one. He's played in seventy three games this year. Like every season's not just going to be the same. But his ability to drive runs in, especially in clutch situations, I think is going to far surpass or at least surpass Jackie Bradley Jr. And the glove looks just as good, right? I mean, no insult to JBJ, but it's in the same ballpark at at worst. It's yeah, no, it's 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 a conversation. It's a conversation, which is but that's crazy, though, that it's a conversation for a kid that's played whatever amount of games he's played so far in his career, like 100, basically, at this point. That's, That's pretty wild. Yeah. It is interesting when you kind of try to picture it, though. Is he Kevin Kiermeyer? Like, like not in terms of I think he's going to hit for I'm more so power. I'm so sick of Kevin Kiermeyer. <laughs> but like, is a, <laughs> seriously, so dude, he is annoying. Game. But is like a league average ish. We made that catch today. <laughs> that was a ridiculous catch. Thirty four years old. What, was, what were the like numbers that? on that, Tyler? What were the numbers on that? A thousand expected. A thousand expected. <laughs> or Dom <laughs> Smith. <laughs> He kept running. I was like, is he fucking really going to catch this shit? Like, what's going on I'll tell here? you, it was way better than the catch Verdugo made that Yankees Twitter was absolutely losing oh, their brother. mind over 80% catch probability on that tonight. <laughs> couldn't People couldn't breathe. Went back and caught a fly ball on a straight line. Oh, my God. Raphael Yankee would have been under it for five seconds. Yankee Twitter has been emotional uh, the last mm. 48 hours. Ever since Aaron Judge got hit on the hand unintentionally, They've been losing their minds. Like all the tweets are losing like, it. you gotta, you gotta stab Adley. <laughs> <laughs> like, and they're serious. They're serious. Dead serious. Yeah. If someone doesn't like, die on the Orioles. Then we're you doing You gotta it wrong. decapitate Gunner tomorrow. Show some heart. 
they they know how fragile Judge is. Like they know, like you gotta. If they're they all thought he was like out for the his, rest of his career. Yeah, when he got the X rays were hands. negative, and they were still like, <laughs> yeah. we have to put cyanide in their fucking shower water. <laughs> like, they also. Uh, someone had the stats. I'm pretty sure our, our DT must have retweeted that. That's the only place I see Orioles stats. Uh, but it was like the the Yankees are second in the league. Like their pitching staff has hit more <laughs> more people yeah. than anyone but one team. And then the Orioles are like 28th. Like they never hit anybody. And let's let's be honest about the state of Major League Baseball right now. I think intentionally plunking people is at the lowest it's ever been. I, I don't see sure. that on a nightly basis. 100%. I'm not seeing guys getting thrown at. Really ever. And when we were growing up, it felt like it happened every night across the league somewhere. So it, let's, let's oh. stop. The guys are not throwing like Pedro. guys. Pedro and <laughs> Ted, doing it, it would be the seventh that he's like, wait, I haven't done it yet. I got to hit somebody on purpose. Like that's that was his goal. But yeah, that's that's just not what's happening. So whatever. Your, your top guy got hit. Like was Mookie true? Were they trying to hit Mookie? No, he he got right. hit in the hand. I didn't it's see just, any it just happens. Fans. No. Judge takes up a lot of space. Just, too. He's a big guy. Yeah, big, big guy. guy, big guy. Orioles like to pitch up and in. I know a lot of uh, people don't like that, but uh, it's you know you got to pitch tough. I mean, it's Aaron Judge and Juan Soto are the two best hitters in baseball. You got to pitch them. T- like, what do you want? Just dick balls all the time? Like back in the day, they want, they do want it handed to them. Yeah, they're not built for the grind. Like Yankee fans, they oh, yeah. they haven't done anything since '09, and they just want one handed to them. They want one grooved. Yeah. Like, remember when Judge was chasing the AL home run record, a thing that wasn't even a thing, like not a thing anyone's ever talked about before or since. They were like, oh, they, why aren't they throwing them strikes? It's like, what do you, these teams are trying to win games. Like, what do you mean? There is an the assumption. There's an assumption from a lot of Yankee fans. This is, this is going to be a special year. I'm like, why? Like, what, what recently has shown you that this is going to end well for you? I, I don't know. This is my favorite part of the year because the same thing happens over and over again. There's a series Every where they get year. badly exposed. They start like losing their minds, panicking, and mm-hmm. it just kind of gets worse and worse and worse until like a trade deadline where they push all the chips in and they're hyped for a week. And then like the returns don't work out whatsoever. Frankie Montas shoulder explodes, whatever it may be. And they're like, oh, this is our life as Yankees fans. It's, you know, nobody has it worse. And then they move on. The Orioles are winning the division. I. I know they lost what Bradish, but like they're they're winning the, winning the division. I feel pretty confident about that. Why do you feel confident about that? Because I just think they got they got more dudes, and they you know they have a lot of resources, obviously. But I also don't think that the way they played last year, the Orioles, they're like, yeah, we're really good. We know it. We're not going to have a lot of highs, a lot of lows. They're just consistently going to play really good ball. I, I don't. The Yankees aren't built for that full season thing, and then into the playoffs. I just don't. I don't see it. Obviously, hat tip to him for having the best starters ERA without Cole. That's crazy, but I don't think it's sustainable. And I hate the Yankees, Jared. That's another thing. Ah, that's yeah. I figured that, that was. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. They really fucking stink. Well, I think their fans are acting. They have a game and a half lead. Their fans are acting like they're up fourteen on the whole division. Like this is like the right. Celtics on the East or something. It's like it's not. It's not like that at all. I mean, they also just played the third place team and got their teeth kicked in. Yeah. Like, uh, so I, yeah, their other teams are the reason we're down here. And honestly, it's really just our fault. Now, other teams have had little to do with why we're where we're at. Yeah. And they'll lose a series to the Orioles tomorrow. It's like this. The Yankees are, they're, they're hey, playing good ball this year, but it's not, they should, their fans should not be acting any differently than previous years. You still got a lot of the same ingredients. I get Soto's there. I get it. But still. Team's not winning the world. I think series. they're they're extra confident because the Astros stink this yeah, year. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's exactly why they're like what it is. the Astros aren't in our way. Coley, yeah, Coley gets October, a good point they, kid there. That's a good point, kid. Well, right listen, there. if every October they get dominated, and then like sometime around Thanksgiving, they're like the Yankees are so back. It's like they haven't even done anything. No. Yet. What are you talking about? I know. <laughs> At the end of the day, if the Orioles want to act like a serious uh. franchise and use their friggin' prospect depth. It's an easy conversation, what will happen. It's just whether they want to be serious. But shout out to Ben Rice, Cohasset boy, who uh, is now up there with them, right? Oh, Filling he's from Cohasset. I didn't know that. Yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, not doing, we're not doing Yankee shout outs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's local. He's local. <laughs> Please. Where is the local to what? I don't care dude, if he's from ocean? Hingham. I'd be so pissed he's on the Yankees. Like, no, no, we're not doing that. That's so like short. a lot of people from Cohasset. Ben Rice ain't one of them. <laughs> This guy's not local. Screw him. He's not from it. <laughs> out on Cohasset. Shout out Benedict Arnold. Uh, <laughs> good job relaying that message to the British. The fuck are you talking about, dude? 
I care about local people. Asshole. <laughs> I cared about the locals all of a sudden. That was, I mean, that was insane. That was, that was insane. <laughs> I was like, shout out Yankees. Love you guys. <laughs> yeah. no, I just, you know, listen. I love you guys, man. You're always doing it for Boston. <laughs> oh, man. I've always loved you guys. I've never loved you more. <laughs> yeah. You guys always represent Boston to the max. Yo, shout Respect. out. Shout out you, Yankees. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. You've just been yeah. doing it right forever. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah. Oh. Shout out Ben I Rice. love your facial hair, bro. I love everything about you guys. That new stadium. <laughs> don't listen to the critics. It's great. Crazy. It's great. I love the old one, too. They're both awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't even get me started on Penn Station. And you, you don't need a mascot. I, I know some people want it. You don't. Keep doing you, man. I love you guys. Oh, I love the fact that you guys don't put your names on the jerseys. Oh, oh and you refuse to have those City Connects. I'm going to buy one of those Ben Rice jerseys. I love him. Yeah. Hey. Well, the Red Sox have the first city connect, right? Yeah, Out of the whole so, league. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I'm pretty sure they did. And uh, they've gone like 0 for 17 since then. Like just stinker <laughs> oh, after The Blue Jays stinker. ones were so bad looking at those for nine Awful. innings. Awful. <sighs> oh, no. No, I, I don't hate them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't hate those jerseys. They're a little too dark, but I, I don't hate them. You get excited about merch. Any merch. I just love just merch. Yeah, I'm a merch guy. Whatever. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> spend money. The di- that, you do. Dude, I, was, I spend I so much. You, I have, a, I have a new hat is. like every single show. Um, Brother. I mean, yeah, you're you're a hat guy too, Coley. But no, I saw the Dodger City I Connect duties, and I'm like, I don't hate them either. Everyone hates them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, they look like funfetti cupcakes. That's cool. <laughs> Dude, I I are, I have like nine City Connect jerseys. I love City Connect jerseys, but oh, I'm probably. in the minority. I'm in the minority. I get it. You have I other just, like, City Connects? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What? what I got? I've I never got... seen you wear a City Connect. Well, not, I don't really. Before. I just like co- I collect jerseys. I don't really wear jerseys that much. But I got the Mariners. I got the Red Sox. I got the Reds. Um, the Mariners blue one. Yeah. Oh, the Reds one is sick. Yeah, the Reds. I was about to say is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I like the Reds one. They have better black jerseys. That's the problem with like the Red Sox have never once even considered having a yellow jersey. That's why it's so Those funny. Are clean. We got Miami. Yeah, the Marlins so like the Miami one, I like the hat. We got Colorado here. No, bad. This is oh, of that one personally. I love this. This is crazy. Uh, Air freshener got, vibes. I never knew this about Steve. The I mean, that's the best yeah, one. Yeah. We got uh, Los Serpientes here. We I don't hate that one. That's that cool. One. Don't hate that one. But that's because the Diamondbacks have bad regular jerseys. That's why that one works. Seattle one's cool. Yeah. They've done that better, though. Oh. Griffey Rookie one's better than that. I will say I hate new jerseys that have, like, vets on them. Like, they did the Seattle All-Star right. jersey yes. that Griffey yes. on it. I'm like, I love Griffey more than anybody. But it's like, don't do that. It's He's not wearing that jersey. That's all. Correct. They sell Ortiz uh, City Connect ones. And I'm like, this. he just never wore it. Yeah, he simply never really wore this true. jersey. We also like the City Connect, but I feel like a majority of people outside of the city do not like our City Connects. They're actually very anti oh, they, them. They, it, they, the only reason why they don't like them is because they get confused by it. And then you explain. It's like, oh, it's the marathon colors. And they're like, oh, like that's cool. But at first, they're like, what? like I can't tell the difference between the Red Sox, a Red Sox fan in the stands and the fucking vendors. And it's like, well, that's a different issue, fat ass. But I think it's <laughs> <laughs> You're talking directly to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you fat fucking idiot. Yeah. It's you way whales. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> you got all that fat blocking the blood oh. to your brain, Tubbs. Yeah, you can't. the fats just got rubbed in there. They did not see that coming. The, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the fat fucking buffoon. The, the out of town fats just got smoked right there. But, you uh, just killed the fats. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but the uh, I mean, the, the second they dropped, you could draw a line just around the city limits and you took one step outside of it. People in Massachusetts hated them. Those yeah. people had to be beaten into submission. But well, they when, were, when could you with all when the could you make two city connect? That's my thing with the Dodgers. It's like, I don't we can just that. do two. No, I don't hate it. I'm just like, well, I didn't know because be if they had one, another right? socks one, I, I'm all in 100 percent. I just didn't know you could do that. I like the fact that you went out and got the inverse colors for this. Yeah, connect. I was going to say yeah, that yeah. one's clean. That Shout out cool. to Ben. Um, yeah. That one's very clean. Yeah, he's, dude, he's awesome. They could do that, and I, I would love that, but I, I don't agree. Know, like, would you want to inverse the hat? Yeah, like then it will look like the UCLA hat, 
but it already does. Yeah, <laughs> but so does. I think like I've I've seen yeah, yeah very that's, clean. That's, that's cool. very clean. That's cool. <laughs> very but clean. I've seen you know like if we were to have a second City Connect jersey, I feel like it would be like Green Monster Green, and I don't know. Maybe that could be cool. Like if it was if the Boston was the same font as like the Fenway Park font at the top of the facade there behind home plate that could look cool i've i've seen concepts where it's just like they use the uh like the, the whole green monster is the concept it's the monster green and then it's the lettering that they use for the monster uh, like the score on yeah. the monster yeah there's a complication though what if you're in the outfield and you're going back you might get confused with the body as it's going back into the wall and then you could risk injury <laughs> agree. That was no, like, strong agree. I was like I've been trying to think about what he. I'm like, what is like, he talking I, about? I was like, that that oh, only makes boy. sense if the green monster was real. It's like, oh, I'm green and I can't notice the fielder <laughs> running at me. Like, if you're wearing the jersey, you're not gonna be like, oh fuck, the green monster ah! it snuck up on me. It's the same color as my <laughs> shirt. Wait, am like, I a wall? Like, <laughs> yeah. Where did that, gonna where that monster players. come from? Players crash all the time because they're not looking. You're looking at the ball. Right. You don't see the. Are you saying they're going to blend into the crash. wall, Tyler? Yes, they'll, you they'll, might. Quick looking, you may not notice. It's just you know, out the corner of your eye, you're trying to see something. It's really the whole ballpark is the same color green. Yeah, it's just. Dangerous. I do like the idea of home home road city connects like the the inverse one Steve has you wear on the road. Yeah, the yellow socks only play at home. I like that. Uh, I don't like anything Tyler said. That was insane. People uh, get I it. was thinking recently, though, baseball is the only sport like it. Both teams could wear the same color. Wouldn't matter at all. Would not matter in the slightest. Is that true? Like football, a quarterback drops back. And if everyone's Actually, wearing the yeah, same it color, doesn't like, it doesn't problem. matter. I, I think basketball, everyone has to be wearing different colors for a certain baseball. Like, you know who the batter is. Like, thousand I mean, percent. There's, like, you know there's who been it is. some like Sox yeah, Phillies it's spring training games where they wear the same color jersey. Mm-hmm. I think 100 percent, Steve, you're right. I, I do want to give a shout out to our guy, Jack, uh, who consistently makes mock up oh. jerseys. Oh, yeah, that's that was so sick. sexy. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, here we go. I Jack, if you're listening, make us make the city connector. What would it look like, Jack? You you, you cook it up. I think that's it. That's I it think right this there. is it. Yeah, it's got section 10 that's on it. it. They you make a city connect that just has it. section 10 on it. But yeah, Why not? we'll be it's the really patch. Good. The red, the Red Sox are are having Alex Cooper do a fucking what first is... pitch in uh, Alex Cooper night. Why can't we have a section ten night? I saw that, and I'm I'm not I'm not a hater. I'm not I'm hating just... on Alex Cooper. I'm just saying I'm not if, hating, we're gonna, I'm if, just if, like... if we're gonna embrace podcasts now, then I mm. feel like I don't know I don't know that I would have not started with the ten. That's all I'm saying. Happy yeah. for Alex Cooper. We love Alex Cooper here, but if we're gonna start dipping into the podcast pond. I'd say that we, there's, uh, a, there's a there's a there's a there's there's a guppy think, in there that probably wants you know some of that. I think we got a little leapfrog there. It just it kind of felt like it. Yep. Yeah, we definitely got leapfrogged. But that's all right. But she we loves st- the Red Sox, so there is that where it's like <laughs> when I think Sox. of people that love the Sox, Alex is <laughs> yeah, the first one yeah. that comes to mind. She yeah. lives and dies with yeah. this team. Yeah. Red Sox win. The Red, four, Red Sox win. Four three. Four three. Uh game three of the series. Um I was drinking some blue moons watching this game tonight. I absolutely had to because some beers can say that they're brewed for baseball, but only Blue Moon is brewed by baseball. And beer and baseball, they just go together. No beer goes better than the one that was literally born in a ballpark. Blue Moon was created at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. It's the natural choice for opening day and all season long. Uh Jake, when the Celtics finally captured that title that you you plan your balls off to win that one uh how many blue moons was was uh part of the celebration uh i responsibly had quite a few i had to um that's what you <laughs> yeah. do when you win a championship and i had a, yeah. got up blue moon for uh providing the beverages <laughs> yeah hell of a night in miami for jake uh again happy <laughs> for jake from its refreshing flavor with valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale is a one of a kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Blue Moon is brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for the new season. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something that's one of a kind? It's bold flavor, bright explosion of color, and iconic orange slice ritual. 
Guarantee is a one-of-a-kind beer experience that is perfect for spring weather. Best served with its signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful hazy color. A beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Bring the ballpark to you with Blue Moon Belgian-style wheat ale. It's a one-of-a-kind every time. Get Blue Moon delivered by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared to see your delivery options. That is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared. Blue Moon, made brighter, celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. That brings us to game three of the series, which was tonight. Um, I think to kind of go back to the opening thought about expecting to win, were we all kind of on the same page here where we were good with two out of three or yeah. Okay. I think I think tonight the Knock, house house money. The Red Sox were good with it. They sat Wong and they sat Sedan Raffaella, who was their hottest player. They dared the Jays to beat him and they just couldn't do it. Yeah. I don't know that I would have been super upset if they didn't win tonight. I would have been like, you know what, we still I think you're upset up. that they did win. <laughs> because why? So I can't say anything about Bayo? I, there's plenty to talk about. He wasn't that sharp tonight, but he was fucking he put his balls out in Toronto which is apparently legal based on the people they have and have not arrested up there for different uh, sex crimes. <laughs> but yeah, I think you would have been pumped if they won the series and you got to shit on Bayo. I don't, I'm not, I don't openly root against Bayo. Bayo <laughs> doesn't do himself you, any you, favors. You tossed me into a group chat specifically <laughs> because people were shitting on Bayo Here, when he hadn't even done anything yet. He had another hissy fit, uh, which is oh my getting God. annoying. Spiked the ball. On a very bouncy surface. It's fun. He's getting annoying with it. And I feel like even the people that were defending Bayo are now starting to be like, all right, dude, fucking relax. Like, I get Uh, when the moment gets the best of you and you get upset. When you have a hissy fit every fucking start, first of all, that means you're not pitching well if you're doing it every start. Second of all, it just it loses its impact. It's like, oh, there goes fucking crybaby Bayo again. Like, no one wants to think that of him. Like, I want to. I want to root for the guy. I want to be happy when he pitches well. But when you just fucking have a little hissy fit every time you pitch, it's just exhausting. He's doing less and less and how you're describing. It's getting more and more. He spiked the ball walking to the dugout. That but was who, it. Who when does I saw that? The who, no one does I, that. Who People does don't that? do that. So what? But who I, gives a fuck? Just, it's. He outdueled Kevin Gosman in this game. You want to talk about him spiking the ball in the second inning? I don't give I'm a not fuck. Like, you I'm brought it up. On this. You brought yeah. it up. I didn't bring it up. You brought it up. I didn't bring it up. No, you literally no, you brought, brought it up. I didn't you, bring it up. You added me I to a group chat. No, 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 no. I it was up. like, Coley. Hey, I didn't uh, even no, see no, it. No. I was like, Coley belongs in this group text because we talk socks in here. Uh, so I, I added Coley. That's it was a bayo. Uh, everyone was shitting on him. And then uh, after he pitched for six strong, and I thought he should have went back out for the strong? seven. <laughs> I don't know if it was six. Seven though, hits, what do you two mean? walks, and he hit two guys. He had no idea where the fuck the ball was going. One of those hits would have just hit IKF if IKF didn't hit a ball that was going for his head. His line, even, even if it's just like, hey, Bayo went six innings, two earned runs tonight. You'd be like, oh, that's great. How many strikeouts? Six? Six strikeouts? That's pretty good. But then he'd be like, yeah, he gave up seven hits, walked two, and hit two. Like, that's not good command. He had a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. A lot of, like, you know. A ton of traffic, which I was critical of online on Twitter.com. Yeah, he had one, one, I two, was very three, critical of that. Yeah, it was guy, the last guys one, were on wasn't it? basically every inning, yeah. It was, and he kept pitching out of it. And he kept pitching. Like, if, if he, if, I think he might be the best extra inning pitcher in baseball because he already has the guy on second. So he has to lock in immediately. He was so much better with traffic on, which was annoying, like very annoying. He can't, he's not good enough to be Daisuke. Like he, he's not good enough to be the pride of Marblehead Daisuke Matsuzaki. He cannot do that sustainably. I thought this was a big start for him because every other start he's done this, he has given up more than two runs. It was about to, fourth inning, it was about to blow up. And you have the mound visit with Bailey. He gets the double play with Turner. That was big. Give him credit for that. But we've, I think we've been pretty honest about Bayo on this podcast saying that he will show glimpses of it. And then it's like, ah, here it comes. Like the meltdown's coming. He avoided it tonight. But do you feel good about him after the start? I don't. I feel, I feel better. better about it. I feel, I feel better, better, but not by much, not by a ton. Not by much. Yeah, it wasn't like, that's what I want to see. Like, no, I didn't want to see well, him hit two guys and walk two guys and have a hissy fit. I didn't want to see that. But six innings, two earned runs, six strikeouts. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So it was a mixed bag. Like, I, I, I was 100% not going to come on here and go negative with Bayo. I was going to say 
the spike in the ball thing. It's like it's just more of the same with the hissy fits. I don't I don't like it. And and there's no way Cora is watching that being like, that's the no. fire I like to see. He no, that always thinks that that's though. annoying. I, I will say I was surprised to hear him after the game. He was very complimentary. Like he was honestly the way he was speaking was closer to how Coley's framing the start where he was like, the stuff was really good tonight. He went out there. He battled. He did his part. Now, maybe that's Cora just not trying to light the fire. I yeah. thought the way Lou framed it was basically how I took it. Am I going to put this on the scale of him spiking the glove in Chicago? No. no. If he's doing it after the inning where he's walking off, it's like, clean it up. To me, what I liked the most was what you saw when it ended. He's sitting at the top of the dugout. He's smiling. He's happy. As Alex Cora said two starts ago, that smile from Brian Bale, we have not seen it in a while. Yeah. To see him kind of build that confidence after this start, even though it was a little dodgy, and if it wasn't the Blue Jays' offense, which is basically the May Red Sox offense, they had traffic in every game this series. That, that's the reality of it, and they couldn't cash in. To see him just make it through and have a decent day, you'll take anything that's a step forward right now. You just hope he builds off of it. Because if it wasn't the Blue Jays, it probably looks a lot different. And he can be the good personality guy. Like, I loved what he was doing there during the Casas mic'd up thing in the dugout. Right. That was funny. And obviously, if he's in the clubhouse with Jansen, that's a good sign. He's tight with one of the vets and and goofing with Vladdy during the game. Like, that stuff's great. And I do think you kind of have to earn that, too. When you're pitching well, you get your attitude at the right place where it's supposed to be. You can also be the the positive dugout guy, the positive vibes guy that that we're not comparing him to Pedro, but Pedro did similar stuff to that kind of goofing off in the dugout, keeping it light. That works. Pedro compares him to Pedro. No, I know. I know. So I guess it's fair to say, but it's just like that. That stuff works when you're doing what you're supposed to do on the mound. And Coley, I'm not going to make and I I know Jared already. I'm not going to make a huge thing about the spike the ball, but it's just like I just don't want to see him doing it. That's it. I just don't want to see him doing it. I guess the opposite is like if he's out there and he sucks and he's got the big smile on his yeah, face. That, yeah. The people are going to be furious. They will. It's like the feeling genuinely furious. Chapman. Yeah. If he's out there not getting out of these gyms and he's like big fucking he smiley can't. guy, people are going dead. No, like I genuinely know. dead. Like I, I've been consistent. I don't give a fuck about him being upset that he's not playing well. I'd much prefer that than him being out there like, man, they paid me and I've become the shittiest pitcher in baseball. I'm Patrick Corbin now. Like that would drive me insane. So the fact that he wants to be better, I see that as a massive good thing. Does Cora love it? No. Is Cora going to be his coach for more than five more minutes? No. <laughs> Why do I care? No, you're not wrong with that. And Tyler, you mentioned the post game comments. I think Cora... I try to read his body language and his tone when he's talking in these pressers. I, the way he was talking about Bayo, definitely complimentary, but I think he would be the first to tell you they still got a ways to go. And he's, he's saying, you know, just throw strikes. Oh, for don't sure. Don't worry. Like, things are going to work for you, but you got to understand it takes time to become the guy. You can't just bang, be the guy immediately. Like, you got to work. You got to work on it and progress to, to get to that point. So... The Jemai look was so funny, though. Oh, that. oh yeah. <laughs> me, <laughs> great. me forever. Jemai texted me. By the way, <laughs> shout out to Jemai. He because uh, I, I, I asked for uh, catch up votes kind of late. And uh, Jemai was the only one to submit it without me asking. And he gave me his vote. And I said, you know what? I might vote for you, vote for you tonight. Like he, he might be he's in the running for that. Yeah, he's definitely he's he's eligible. Um, oh, there is one other thing not to get off bail. But there was one thing on the Section 10 Reddit. People were like, don't the fact that I get the text message votes. Does that compromise my vote? No, because I I don't ever do you do it before. I text do you like people, write it down. Do you know? Do you write it down before you text people what you're going to vote? No, but I, I also trust just, that you're not going to now. You're not. I don't think I don't I just not to do that fair enough. Yeah, I don't know that like. I don't know that like the expert panel i guess we'll call them they're mm. never really in agreement and i don't know if someone could go back in time you like, could say anything yeah like someone is yeah like there's just some random ass <laughs> votes that come from from that crowd uh but it's not like you couldn't detect a pattern from me like oh he picks whoever lou picks every time plus like lou goes with will on the audio which i don't listen to right. yeah and you like, don't know our reaction. four picks either so no, yeah i don't yeah. know your picks yeah i don't know will and lou if it's an audio so that's right there that's six votes that i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. so it doesn't really and there's usually not a consensus amongst no. jamai ob uke and middlebrooks there's just and tc 
ever. Then again, yeah. hey, if you're listening, keep track if he's copying any of those guys. Yeah, if I'm text copying them, anybody. Do keep track. Yeah. But I mean, usually I just look at the numbers and I'm like, it's yeah, that's who it is. Hmm. Like Casas last series. Like Casas last <laughs> series. Like those numbers, <laughs> those, those numbers Twitter were numbers nuts. were undeniable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he definitely led the series in Twitter impressions. That is undeniable. Not even close. Maybe in yeah. all of baseball. Yep. Yeah. Tyler, yeah, your numbers are once again fudged. Was this 27% change up or did he throw the sinker? Was a 71%? That was 27% change up. Definitely. Okay. So as we look at last start, right, with the slider, where it was his primary, uh, obviously trying to use it a little bit more here, but the Yankees are very slider prone. That's a big thing. I will say on the Bayo Arsenal front, the sinker, and this is where the emotion stuff plays in. I'd also be curious with the change up as well because it had basically a mile and a half added to it. So was this him trying to find the velocity band or was this just him fired up? He hit 99. So like that's where the emotion and you see him like coming through where it's like, all right, channel it into that. Let me see you throw harder. Let me see you just elevate your stuff like some of the best pitchers do when they're in a tight spot. It's just when you're going to go spike the baseball, you should probably go do it in the tunnel. You shouldn't do it on the field. That was what I would say, because we know when these pitchers go into the tunnel half the time, the shit you think happens or you could imagine happens is 10 times worse. So like, just take it into the I dugout think him and do spiking it spiking the balls like the dumbest shit I've ever. I think he's a moron for doing it. Coley, what are your thoughts? <laughs> People love it. People are a big fan. Of him it would be that would People be a call like- into 98.5 thing. This guy. Spiking the ball, That's spiking the fucking drives me ball. insane. Oh. It's just like I, I, did, can't I it care. genuinely didn't bother me that much. No, tonight. no, like the ball, like you Coley. added me to a group chat I I, of people <laughs> talking shit about. I it. did it, yeah, but not me. Not me. I, <laughs> oh I, no, don't you should you made a bad mistake here. You made a really bad mistake. <laughs> I didn't. Knee, the, bend the knee, bend the knee right now. I just said another another temper tantrum. It's nothing I haven't said here. Just before another he doesn't fit. know yeah. it, that's all. Just don't. You do said it. another Bayo temper tantrum? Question mark. Yeah, don't say exclamation point. Is that something I haven't said right here? Temper t- like temper tantrum. I don't know that spiking a ball and then being completely fine moments Coley, later. Is tantrum. Let me just tell you something right now. I had a bad day a few weeks ago, and I bought a foot massager. I fucking spiked that thing into the fucking smashed it. Just. Sometimes you have a temper tantrum. I'm not above temper tantrums. Yeah, I don't know. The, like I have a four year old and a two year old. Like I see temper oh, tantrums. Nice right. thought. This, this and what are they doing? The wife am I right? Hey, 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 another round. She doesn't listen to the show. Thank you, like, thank uh, anyways, God. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. Like especially again compared to other shit he's done. When the worst things haven't bothered me, him doing that. Like I don't. I watch a show. I watch a sport where guys primarily bounce balls off the ground like oh, frequently. a ton of so bounces that just yep. yeah doesn't bother no one ever me at all. like what bothers me to... is when he pitches into traffic and then gives up a bomb and then we lose that bothers me tremendously no one ever says shit to dan him going housing. out there he genuinely outdueled a better pitch and that's the thing is, that happens is dan housing the ground. stays throwing balls off the ground yeah uh it's true yeah it didn't it didn't bother me it, it was just kind of like again you know, like if, if that was the first time he did it, we wouldn't even be talking about it. It's track just, record. There's a history of it. So you're going to keep taking note when it, it's happened. If, multiple if times. I wonder if Corey that. just says, stop throwing. Like, just just stop throwing stuff. Just like keep like your composure. It's his keep job. It. No, I know. Throw throw into the catcher's glove, but stop ball specifically throwing items into the ground. Let's yeah. say that. So stop thought, spiking stuff. No joke. I thought worse than this. Uh, he had to throw the ball back to the catcher to give to the umpire. They would switch out the ball. He threw that thing 107 miles an hour. I was like, that. that's where you need to calm down. Like yeah. that seemed like he was more angry than when he spiked the ball. Again, he went out there. Was he the sharpest? No. But that's most starts. Like we just sucked Tanner Hugg's dick for not being the sharpest and getting through a game. That's exactly what Bayo did here tonight. And he really hasn't done that. I did year. not suck his dick. I, me neither. You wanted to. Tyler? I thought about it. But I will say with Bayo, <laughs> when this is like what we consider his best outings of the year, that's where it gets a little difficult. That grinding through a start is what we're grading yeah, him. Out. You have to like, that's his, where his first. This is one of his best starts of the year. Starts. That's just where in terms watching of results. the game matters. Like if you just saw six yeah. innings, two earned runs, you'd be like, "Man, he took a big step forward, huh?" And then you watch it, and you're like, "Oh, 
he kind of got away with one mm. tonight. Like he wasn't Numbers very efficient. Numbers kind of lie. That was a yeah. rope that got caught by Romy Cully. I thought that was a funny either tweet or text by you where he's, he's like just like, he's the blaming bat. the he's blaming the Lord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was looking up at the heavens. Why did you not let me get a hit there? Like that was so mean. But yeah, he's like the guy who's never played the fucking position before caught yeah. that one. He's shitting. I me? literally shaved my hair off so this could happen. Like what the hell? It's also. Crazy. Vladdy Jr. not paying a single ounce of attention to the game the first two innings, just talking to the Red Sox dugout the entire time. Like, I'm just staring. I'm like, this guy, like, has had multiple down years now, and he could give a fuck less what's going on. He's just talking to everyone in the dugout. We talk about dudes' appearances on this show. I think he looks a lot better without the hair. I was like, who is this young fella here? Mm. I I thought he looks good. It didn't really help him that much, but I thought he looks good. Yeah, you look fine. Huh? Yeah. Looks a lot lighter, yeah, I too. Was... I know the black, you know, jersey or the dark jersey, that definitely helps. It's trimming, but... Yeah. yeah. You'd say he uh, he upped his aura? Uh, his aura definitely was upped, especially when they did the side-by-side. I was like, oh, God, this guy, take the guy on the left. Yeah. Uh, Jaron Duran homer in this one. This one was for the lead. Uh, vote for Jaron Duran. You know what? I, I, I've been throwing around some ideas here hmm. on how we can... Uh, help the Jaron Duran all-star push. Is there a way that we could do like a live stream that was centered around voting for Jaron Duran? Can we do that? Is there yeah, a way that five times that? a day, right? Each person. Yeah. We just threaten people to vote too. We can do that. Hmm. If we, there's got to be a way. That How would we know? We won't. Hmm. I guess if we <laughs> woke up the next, the next day totals. and he was just like fifth in voting, then we would be like, <laughs> yeah, oh, good job, guys. We, we did it. We did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like how but would we? He's so out of it, dude. He's not even top twenty right dude, now. Can we like, be that's honest? That's ridiculous. How the hell was he not top twenty? How is because he not of, in the results? It's a it's a fan base thing right now. But like, top twenty though. I know, but like it's not even about Tyler the players. Freeman got votes. It's not even about the players. It's about the teams. Like the starting outfields for whole teams. Like the Texas Rangers whole outfield is like above Duran in voting. It's like it's just fan bases going out there and voting. That's really all it is. It has nothing to do with like, oh, look at his numbers compared to this guy. It's like, no, like this fan base cares about their players more. That's all it is. I, yeah, didn't, yeah. didn't the Royals have like eight people start mm-hmm. one year? 15 or 14? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Royals. Like CDs the, Escobar the Jays, starting shortstop hitting 222. The oh. Jays <laughs> stuffed the, the ballots too. So it's, I don't know. Yeah. Man. It's well, annoying. Red- Red Sox fans have always been bad and uh, about voting for this, but also this is not a great year for Jaron Duran to be having a great first half when the Celtics are winning a championship and the Red Sox just got over 500 the second their season ended. You know what I mean? Like that people have no idea what Jared, like the average fan, we've watched every fucking game. The average fan just started watching them. Well, there's also something to be said about, how many times is this guy really popping up on like the national scale? I think he is, but can, I think you consistently have to do it to be able to get in these discussions and, and eventually the word spreads of like, oh, this guy could be an all star because we've kind of recently had that discussion about Jaron Duran going into the season. We're like, all right, what version are we going to get after things tailed off last year? Obviously, entries play a role. I think for Jaron's case. He just has to consistently keep doing this where this year might be the sacrifice year where it's like you weren't on the ballots, you weren't in the results, but the discussion started to happen. And then next year, it's not, we already had the talks. So now you can be a guy that makes the all-star team. Coley? I think the, uh, Coley. Are they still doing the final four vote? Yes. I don't Final know. five. I think they still do that. Yeah. Because like he's out of it for this well, vote. but. The f- go ahead, Jared. Uh, someone from the Red Sox has to make it. That's something that we're forgetting here, and it's- that's gonna be Hauk, though. Or maybe Devers. Where's Devers? There's also the, the player vote for a reserve. Devers is third. Devers is twenty four thousand votes behind Jordan Westberg. <laughs> Does that not tell you everything you need to know? Okay, but you can make the argument if you look at Jordan Westberg's numbers. I, I went through all yeah. of them. But I'm just saying you a lot of All-Stars argument. popularity. Jordan Westberg. Yeah. Whose side are you on? <laughs> no, dude, I'm just like, saying. <laughs> but like, if you're going to be mad, be Yankees. mad about Connor Wong. Vote be Yankees. mad about Connor Wong. Yeah. Connor Wong's like I'm number not, eight on that list, and Connor he deserves Wong. it. He deserves, yeah. He's like two or three in war right Yankees. now. Vote Ben Rice. Yeah. I mean. spare me. I think when you also look, and this is not. It's 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 not a knock. 
I guess it's not a compliment either. It's kind of just more of an explanation. Right. When you look at Jaron Duran's Stay numbers, up. like, he, yes, he's having an all-star year, but it's heavily aided by his wins above replacement, which is a great way to look at how good a baseball player is. But his war is favored by his defense and base running right now. Like his offensive numbers, if you look at them, they're not going to jump off the page at you besides the triples. Yeah. Uh, but I think that that's what is holding him back is people are probably looking at the batting average in the OPS and being like, I'm supposed to pound the keyboard for that. But it's like, well, he's a well-rounded player. Like He's one of the best well-rounded players in baseball, and that's why he should be an all-star. I think where we're at as fans, where we're at, like, you know, we know Jaron. That's way different than so many baseball fans. I don't think a lot of baseball fans or really much of any outside of New England have any kind of bond or any kind of care for Jaron Duran. That's nothing against Jaron. You just have to do it for X amount of years to be in these discussions. If he was having this season, but he had a different name, if he was one of the more notable guys, then he's one of the top five or six right now. I think it's as simple as that. Obviously, Red Sox voting factors into this. Sox fans are so bad at voting for the All-Star to the point where we should like tell them not to and maybe they will then. I don't know what's going to make this work, but it's consistently not happening with Sox fans voting their guys into the All-Star game. This is for a while now. We only had three and 18, right? I think we had five. I think we had Mookie. five. Stin Steven was it five? Right, make it. It was like, or no, was that Mookie, was Mookie, JD. Um, was a, did Mitch Xander. make it? Moreland made it, I think. Here we go. Chris Sale, JD, and Mookie. That's it? You sure? Yep. 2017, Kimbrel, Sale, Mookie. 2016, Ortiz, Bogarts, Jack, Eden, Pats. That's crazy. You know what? I was thinking about, I was like, I feel like there was one year where there was like a fuck ton of like those guys there. And it was I, 19. And yeah. I, it was either 19 or there was a year where like they all like got together, but it was in different uniforms. And they like, oh, the hey, so- Socks had five. Socks had five. In 19? Three on ESPN's thing. In uh, 18, they had Sale. Kimbrel, Mitch Moreland, J.D. Martinez, and Mookie Betts. So maybe those are after roster ads they don't put on this list? That could be, that, yeah, that could be the initial. I think Moreland was. Yeah, I feel like I'm that's probably the that. initial roster, and then this yeah. is the one that, yeah. Sure. It's insane Xander wasn't one of Absurd. those. Absurd. Like, actually insane. But even, like, Steve, what you're saying, like, Mike Trout is ninth. That's the thing. Uh, and obviously, that's it. That's like Angels fans If he's having people, this Duran year, then it's like, forget about it. Obviously, he's an all-star. And he's basically retired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I see there's three Yankees. And there's three of Tyler's Yankees in the top six. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Kwan's fourth. Like, the average fan's not voting for Stephen no. Kwan. Stephen Kwan's electric. I love Stephen Kwan. But that's all Guardians fans. Like, all 464,000 of those votes are all 464,000. Guardians fans. That's what that is. And Kyle Tucker, I don't think he has this crazy nas- nas- uh, national poll. Like, he's really good, but I don't Astros know that fans he's are, that well they known. Travel. They, yeah, they're, they they're are. Astros fans are very dire for bonded. sure. And that's like Jordan's first. You know what I mean? He's first in dude. DH. Uh, Cedric Mullen, which is correct, sucks, dude. He sucks. Tyler Freeman Sorry. sucks. Kevin Kiermeyer sucks. Like, Evan Carter's hitting below 200, isn't he? Like, he what sucks, the fuck? Mike. That's crazy. It's crazy that these guys, I don't care about fan votes or anything. Like, if this is what's determining the All-Star game, just stop it. Quit it all because it's not working. Hey, Doogie's sixth. Fuck it. How about Evan that, Carter Tyler? has an 80 OPS plus. Yeah, and Alex Verdugo and his friggin' war, by the way, <clears throat> Sedan, Raffaella, Willier, Abreu, and Jaron Duran are all fucking better than him, and Tyler O'Neill's basically tied with him. So spare me on the Alex Verdugo talk as well. <laughs> He's like your fifth best outfielder. Tyler hates Alex Verdugo so much. It's the only Yankee he hates. Michael Massey. It's the only Yankee he hates. (laughs) Fuck you guys. Tyler, I know you were going to say this, but Volpe is third in shorts. That's ridiculous. He should be way higher than that. This guy should be the starter in the All-Star game. (laughs) He should pitch. Yeah, he can. (laughs) I love, man, I I love that you love Anthony Volpe. Is it Volpe or Volpe? Volpe. Volpe. P. P. That was one of my, my guidance counselor, Mr. Volpe. Oh, nice. Yep. Fuck yeah. Hashtag was. vote Yankees. Hashtag vote Yanks. Hashtag <laughs> pinstripe pride. <laughs> Hashtag bombers ASG. Hashtag <laughs> Bronx Zoo. What the fuck has happened, dude? Vaughn Grissom is 10th in second baseman voting. Vaughn 
fucking Grissom, who had what never a multi hit game this year? Is that that's true, Coley? That was a stat you dropped last episode. I think that's a big joke. Yeah, that's a that's a prank that people are playing on the. Internet. Like I get Yoshida, I understand the international thing. People are going to vote for him in that way. Cool. And he's been sick this year. Oh, what? Where is he? In the he's ninth for DHs. Like Durant couldn't make top friggin' twenty, top twenty, just there's an those, appearance. There's a lot of outfielders. But like Jerks and Profar is nine hundred thousand votes. He's been unreal this year. Even with everything sure. we've said, though, it's it's just absurd that he's not top twenty. Like it's absurd. I, I am factoring in like not as much national, you know, notoriety and all that. Still needing to get to that point. I think he's on MLB Twitter a decent amount, right, with all these triples and and flying around and all that. But I don't know, man. Not even having vote results. I'm like, what are we doing here? The Red Sox are, have too large of a fan base for it to all like it's the fans act like they're too cool to vote. It's I don't get it, too, because we grew up with like this wasn't a problem, right? I, I don't remember this being an issue early on. And then at some point it became a thing where Sox fans don't vote. There's a we bunch of lunatic Sox fans that care regardless. We got job, of, dude. No, I know we are employed. You know and I'll kids. add. For the people that are Tyler's like, oh, drowning himself. I hope I drown. And for the people who are like, <laughs> I'm not voting for them because I'm not supporting John Henry. Guess what? Fucking voting for these guys are going to make their arbitration prices go up. So they're going to have to spend more money. This is the stuff that hey, gets Tyler's brought up to in trade those cases. Again. And I'm not trying to trade Tyler, anyone. Tyler, 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 raise the money. If it costs more money, they will be guys, traded. I promise. I'm not <laughs> trading. I want John Henry to have to pay. Support the players, man. They didn't do anything. Like, and if you don't vote Red Sox, them. just vote Yankees. Like, it's right. not hey. that hard. Right. <laughs> you all right, Tyler? No. <laughs> the Yankees did lose today, so he's <laughs> Yeah, he's the extra <laughs> innings. It was close. He's like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. What did Ben Rice do tonight? No, we can't hope, have I shit, hope, man. I hope he went off. <laughs> we can't have shit. I, I ride for these guys and they're just losing like crazy. I, I mean, you you stop the show to be like, shout out, newest <laughs> Yankee, Ben Rice, my best hey, friend. Hey, one for three with the oh, Remy tonight. Together. We were boys. He had an RBI yeah, tonight. Boat had Rice. 90 home runs. Boat Rice. A walk and an RBI. What an asshole. <laughs> Don't talk about my boy Ben like that. Where's the All-Star game yeah, next so year? Do we know where next year's All-Star game is? Atlanta? I think it is finally in Atlanta. Vote vote Jaron for that one, because we know you're not voting him for this one. Get him in to the Atlanta All-Star game. Maybe that's it's, the one. Well, if they do the... Because the Final Four isn't based on voting, because Xander was always in it. I think that's where they're like, yeah. these guys, one of these guys should just really be I think be that's in. like we a war thing, the where they're just like, all right, who deserves to be in it? Yeah. That's where, it, when Duran rightfully gets put into that, that's when we, we when we do the stream yep, or something yep. because doing it now like he's already not gonna get it can't yeah i'd say like d don't vote now but get those votes ready if he yeah. makes the final five keep and up the good the work five. guys don't yeah. vote <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing an Stay awesome long. job <laughs> hey Stay you're doing everything long. right right now <laughs> yeah you guys are crushing it just don't vote and then when he gets to that final four vote that's that's when we ride at the Yeah, don't vote or vote Yanks right now, but then when it's final <laughs> yeah. five, <laughs> right. go Durant. It's the perfect plan. It's the perfect plan. It's the perfect plan. Wait to vote Duran. Yep. Duran 2025. Or ah. 2024. What did you just do, dude? There's some kind of flying bug in this room right now. I don't know. Oh, why. I thought they overturned the Yankees game to get in the win. <laughs> yeah, that's his reaction to <laughs> Orioles and <in> 10. <laughs> Fuck with me, dog. I got the spray. You good? Peachy. All right. I just want to make sure. I don't want to move on. I don't want to move on. Um, Oh, unless unless you're good. What? Oh, I do have Jaron Durant thoughts on the actual game. Okay, proceed. This homer he hit, obviously the sixth of the season, his second longest homer of his career. Over the last month, he's hit the second, third, and fourth longest homers of his career since he changed his mechanics. 
not telling you he's turning into some, you know, 20 homer guy or whatever it may be, but it feels like the power starting to uptick a little bit. I think it's going to be a little bit more part of his game. And at least when he's smoking baseballs, they're going farther than they did before. Okay. And you knew he was very locked in because he had a patented broken brain play getting thrown out to him. Well, I mean, yeah, it's nice to mix those, mix those in. Keep, keep us honest, Jaron. Mix those in. That's okay. Right. Yeah, like, let's not just be perfect. Mix some of those in. Correct. Yeah. I want yeah, him to let it go. Charm. Just keep moving. Don't get into the rundowns. Just fly full speed. Make them right. do something. It, it's it's, to make that throw it's weird. Like, it's doing? weird seeing him not run. I'm like, what the hell is that guy doing standing? He's one of the best runners ever. That was bizarre. It's also just uh, a testament to how far this team has come. That they were the dumbest team in baseball in April and May. We haven't talked about them being dumb in a while. No. No. The dumb counts low. Well. Mm-hmm. I mean, Hamilton um, still can't reach first, but the, the dumb count is low. Yeah. And when it does reach first, the first baseman doesn't catch it. So Unless, they, it's, they, Bob. They, they, yeah, <laughs> unless it's Bob. Unless uh, it's Bob. Does. Actually, Bob had an error in this series. But whatever. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's just a fact. I didn't did say cost, anything that did, was incorrect. Did, did it cost him the game? Nope. Because I'm pretty sure Dom Smith made an error that cost him a game. I, I don't know. That has nothing to do with the series. You, Suspend well, yourself. Well, I thought we were just talking about. I thought I thought you're we were jumping just talking behind. About, <laughs> no, I got you. I, I, I got no, no, you there. no, 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 yeah, I, no. I thought we were just. I thought we were talking about errors at first base and and the ramifications of those errors. Bob made an error and the Red mm-hmm. Sox won. Dom Smith makes an error. The Red Sox lose. And it was because of that error. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm that just had saying. nothing to do with Dom Smith. I'm just All referring right. to Bob's. All right. Yeah. I'm just saying. We're just I keeping it on. Dog. We're just keeping it one hundred. Straight facts. Yeah. Uh, if you're like Tyler and you're you're looking for Yankee tickets, Game Time <laughs> is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets the first pitch at Yankee Stadium, with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Yankee tickets. Uh, <laughs> You want to go down to Yankee Stadium? Let's, <laughs> let's check out the Yankees schedule. When you look at New Yankee Stadium, too, they get the judges' chambers, oh. and then right next to that, you got the Millican mob. <laughs> and all, Millican all, everybody's mob. just out there doing the roll call. Ben Rice. Yep. <laughs> ben Rice. He doesn't do the Doogie one, but he does all the other ones. No, no. And trust me, if if you are part of the Yankee universe, bore you in luck because. The uh, New York Yankees are home. Uh, th- well, they're off Thursday. They're home this weekend against the Atlanta Braves. And then guess what? They just go across town to play the Mets. So if you want to see your New York Yankees play the Mets, well, guess what? You don't have to go very far. You can get tickets right over there at City Field and see the New York Yankees. Save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Save even more with the exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Save even more when you choose a section. You let Game Time choose the seats at Yankee Stadium for you. Uh, all in pricing, so you can toggle this feature, and it shows the total of your Yankee tickets up front with no special fees at checkout. Uh, they've got panoramic views of Yankee Stadium. You can look at your seat in the app before you buy. Uh, and they've got the lowest price guarantee. Your Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. The game time coverage, your purchase of Yankee tickets is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry today. Take the guesswork out of buying Yankee tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the promo code section 10 for $20 off your first purchase of Yankee tickets. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the promo code section 10. That is S-E-C-T-I-O-N-1-0 for $20 off your Yankee tickets. Download the game time app today. Last minute Yankee tickets, lowest price guaranteed. (laughs) Thanks for that. Yeah. I think it's time. Ah! 
Clark's Ketchup Series MVP brought to you by Clark's Ketchup. Drizzle that ketchup. Uh, it is a series sweep. 3 nothing. The Boston Red Sox take them all against the Toronto Blue Jays in Toronto. Um, I don't know where this vote's going to go. This one will be interesting. Will it come down to Will and Loomer again? I don't know. I don't know, but we're about to find out. I know that for damn sure. Rubero! Leading off the first vote. Steven. Uh, I will keep this short and sweet. He had over a 2,000 OPS in this series, hit 714. I'm loving him. The more I watch him, great hits, great catches. Sadon Rafaela, series MVP. Wow. Okay. Coley Mick. Uh, so in the actual series, Tyler O'Neill had, I believe, the go-ahead home run in game one and the tying home run in game two. Uh, very clearly the, the Clarks Ketchup MVP from where I'm sitting for players on the team. However, Jared, this city, as we've seen this millennium, gets very inspired by winning. Winning from their neighbors. When Tom Brady hit the scene, everyone said, who the fuck is this kid? The Red Sox got their shit promptly together to become the most winningest baseball team in terms of championships in all of MLB since the turn of the century. The Boston Celtics went out, won a goddamn championship, and it's all Alex Cora could talk about. He was pissed off that they won a championship because he doesn't think the people in his building, the people above him, have the same goals in mind. He doesn't think he's got a wick prospect at his back in that building, but he wants his guys to have those same kind of aspirations. This series, Clark Ketchup MVP, goes to the entire Boston Celtics organization. Okay, it's a vote for the Celtics. Jake, your vote. The Celtics is a great pick. Uh, it's starting to make me reconsider, but when you hit three home runs in a series, you set the tone. Like Coley said, the significance. I got to go Tyler O'Neill, not to be confused with T.O. Terrell Owens. <laughs> wow. Uh, that is one vote Tyler O'Neill. That is one vote Boston Celtics and one vote Sedan Rafaela. T-Dog, your vote. So, I would have said I was in the Tyler O'Neill camp previously, but you do have to get points and graded on the games you play in. Raffaello only played in two. Tyler O'Neill was out there for a third, but he goes 0 for 4 tonight. Sedan Raffaella, I think O'Neill had very similar cases in those first two games. Raffaella being the spark plug. What didn't get mentioned, because I'm not going to repeat the stats Steve just gave on him hitting, the defense had a really nice catch in center field, diving play. Also, on a play in the gap to save a double, made a really tough play look really easy. Obviously, when he's hitting this well, somehow we're not talking about his defense, but I'm going to give it to Raffaella. Wow. Taking a lead here. That is two votes. Sedan. That is one vote Tyler O'Neill and one vote Boston Celtics. My vote for the Clarks Ketchup Series MVP. You know, Coley, I'm a big believer in tone. You know? You got to set the tone. You got to have tone. You got to watch your tone. Tyler. This was a series sweep. And there's one individual who I think set the tone for this series. Because the pitching performances didn't really stand out that much. They were good, but they weren't like, man, that was amazing to watch. It was the Red Sox offense that really set the tone in this series. And that's why my vote belongs to Tyler O'Neill for setting the tone with two bombs and then keeping it going to be like, man, this guy's on fucking fire. Tyler O'Neill, my vote. Clark's Ketchup Series MVP. That is two votes, Tyler O'Neill. Two votes, Sadon Rafaela. One vote, Boston Celtics. Wow. 
to the panel we go. Since he was the first to submit, I'm gonna give it to Jemai right now. Here it is. Jemai says, man, and the beat goes on. My drizzle <laughs> goes to the Red Sox bullpen. And that's with a recommendation from a big Section 10 Sox fan up here in Canada. Uh, says they shut it down and gave up one earned run in the three-game sweep. So I had to pick them. So that is two votes Tyler O'Neill, two votes Sedan Rafaela, one vote Red Sox bullpen, one vote Boston Celtics. <laughs> Next vote. <laughs> OB. Talking socks. It's Tyler O'Neill. Tyler O'Neill three. Sadon two. Kevin Euclid. Sadon Rafaela. Three votes Sadon. Three votes. T.O. Will Middlebrooks. He was 0 for tonight, but give me Mr. Canada. Wow. What is that, 4-3? Yeah. 4-3, mm -hmm. T.O. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Tom Karen. Tyler O'Neill. Oh, fucking Canada, he says. That is five votes, Tyler O'Neill. Three votes. Say Don Rafael. Yeah. Could have some fuckery here. That leaves us with Will Fleming, who has an audio clip that features himself and Loomer Lowing. This could be, I mean, if this is two votes Rafaela. Uh, oh God, I kind of doubt it, but it could be. I'm with Steve. All right. You gotta lose points for the last game. Here it is. Hey, hey fellas, what's your name? Say who? Say Willie. Say hey, say who? Swing it at the plate, say hey, say who? Say Willie, that giant kid is great. When he hits the ball, his slums on me. Say fucking hey, fellas. Toronto, another series win, a sweep for the Red Sox in Toronto. And our say hey kid is with us. I told you to come up here and sweep this ass. <laughs> right? So they needed to do, and they did exactly that. This team is in trouble, by the way, the Blue Jays. They are in some trouble. Sox right. rolling, winning every way possible. Springer looks a little old. Vladdy, you know, not doing it right now. But the Red Sox are, Lou. And I think, you know, big picture, what they're doing is so impressive because they win in different ways yeah. every night. It was speed and havoc on the base paths, now power here in Toronto. It's all coming together. Yeah, it is. I mean, like you said, even tonight, a couple of bombs, five bags again. Saw what happened in New York. They've continued it here, wreaking havoc all over the place, and, and they got a little launch mode. You know, so it was uh, it was fun to watch, which sort of brings me to my MVP. Because the man comes here north of the border. He hits three home runs, right? I mean, Tyler O'Neill, how do you not look at Tyler O'Neill and say he's the MVP? Well, I'll tell you what, I look at it and say, no, he's not. Oh, I'm going oh, with the say hey kid. Oh. I'm going with say Don Rafael. Oh. He didn't play tonight. The series was already oh. over. What did he do? He had a bomb five himself, four? got on base six out of eight no. times, five knocks, five stole a bag. Four? Forget about it. Beautiful catch on Kiermaier in wow. center. Raphael is my MVP. Wow. You know, I did find it really kind of poetic in a way, Lou. We get the news that Willie dies yesterday. And all of a sudden, like within 10 minutes, Raphael gets the big go-ahead hit. He's diving all over the place, making great catches in the outfield. He is everything that Willie would have loved in a ball player. Um, I... I am going to go sour cream glazed donuts. I am going Tim Hortons. I mean, the guy comes home. He hits homers in his first two at-bats. Uh, okay. Hits a big one yesterday. Oh, wow. You know, th this team is so much more lethal at the plate when O'Neal is swinging it. Yeah, I saw the record against left-handed starters sucked. 
And then they're three and one since he's been back. Yeah, he's huge. Left-handed dominant lineup balances it out. I'm with you. What can you do? Chicks dig the long ball. <laughs> they do. The Red Sox are rolling. They're playing Willie Mays style baseball. And the Clark's Ketchup Series MVP is Tyler motherfucking O'Neill. I don't know how this he does guy, it. How does he do this? How does he do this? I don't know how he does it. Like, people are going to think that it's rigged. It's really not. Like, On everything. Everything. Locked it's crazy. It's crazy. And he even teased Rafaela there. He had no yeah. idea. He had no idea what our votes were going to be, what the other panelists' votes were going to be. It's just... Will Fleming hits a walk-off home run every episode. <laughs> it's crazy. He's got the most walk-offs from the Sox this year. It's, it's wild. every episode. It's every we episode. We didn't give out ketchup for like six weeks, and Will Fleming's just been locked in waiting Whack. for ketchup to come <laughs> back. Yeah. Yeah. It's It always comes down to his vote, and he's it, and the way that he submits his vote, is not like my vote is blank. No, it's, it's always like and here is here is your fucking winner. <laughs> Even though it's a ro- a voice recording and like, he has <laughs> no idea what the other <laughs> ten other votes are. Every time he's saying it, like he's handing the award over, and he, yeah. is. he is. He is. He is. He is. One of these. One of these times, like the other nine of us are going to have like Mastaki Oshida and he's going to be like, and you're Clark Ketchup MVP. Yeah. We and almost got to like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. We, we gotta, like, tank this thing and I'll say Wally next week. And then he's going to be like, I think Wally had a great series. Yeah. On yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wally, the motherfucking green monster. <laughs> uh, sh- shout out uh, uh, Willie Mays. Uh, they don't do songs for players anymore. That's something no. I'll bring back. There's no. no more songs for individual players. And he said, Rafaela, I uh, was doing his Willie Mays impression. We didn't even talk about Chris Martin getting back on that horse oh. and making the play of his life, of mm-hmm. his 500-year-old life. I couldn't believe it when, when he made that grab. That was insane. Yeah. His it's head just, bounced like that baseball bale threw off the, tar- or off the ground. Like, very it was similar. that serious. Just seeing dirt on the back of anyone's jersey especially a pitcher is bizarre so credit to him for making it i i I laughed and then i was like wait is he hurt like is he he okay (laughs) (laughs) so that was awesome though cora wanted to laugh in the post game but he didn't want to come across as like being insensitive so he he just goes what whatever it was you got it was whatever (laughs) i'm like that's that's awesome i'm glad will brought it up too because it doesn't get brought up enough how bad george springer has been yeah. With this contract, a, a people or a, a player, a lot of people wanted after they traded Mookie Betts. It was like, oh, just sign Springer. Like yeah, that's the same thing, and that would have been a disaster. Thankfully, another we guy. didn't give that money to someone else. Yeah. Another guy with more voice votes than Jaron Duran right now. Ridiculous. He is hitting one ninety six. He is more more well known. That is a point. Yeah, what and has he plays, to the game he plays I for a country versus a city, right? That helps. Well, Boston's um, a city and Canada's a state. Right. 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 So whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, congratulations, Tyler O'Neill, Clark's Ketchup Series MVP. Uh, has he won one this year? I feel like he has. Yeah, he had, had to. to. In I think April. this is the second. But he led one, yeah. the team. Oh, no, Duran does. Duran does. Yeah, Duran's got like four or five. I think he's at four. Yeah. The Stop and Shop Public Hey, brought to you by Stop and Shop. Head on down to Stop and Shop right now. Use the promo code Section 10 to get 10 cents off each tangerine when you buy at least five pounds of tangerines only at Stop and Shop. It is an off day today, and I'm not going to suspend myself for that one because it actually is an off day this time. Uh, <laughs> enjoy your off day. Uh, this weekend, it will be the Boston Red Sox versus the Cincinnati Reds. It's Cutter Crawford versus Andrew Abbott. It is Nick Pavetta versus Frankie Montas, and we have no idea who's pitching on Sunday, Tyler. Yep, nothing's been uh, decided yet. Cooper yeah. Criswell's down in AAA. Yeah, that was shocking. And he's stuck there, right? Yes. For 15 days. That's right. Unless yes. someone lands on the IL. So if they have a phantom IL or they go that route, but... And that person's have... stuck for 15 days. Like, hey, it's a no-win situation. It's going to be Brad Keller or Chase Anderson, I'm assuming. Sick. It's DFA uh, Brad Keller. No, don't do it's that. Tyler's Carter boy. Crawford, three and six with a 354 ERA, a 115 whip, and a 9.2 strikeouts per nine. 
Uh, two straight quality starts for the first time since April 20th and 26th for Cutter Crawford. Uh, the Red Sox won a Cutter Crawford start for the first time since May 1st. They had lost <laughs> seven straight of his starts. Um, the strikeout play is working for Cutter. He has had eight and nine in his last two starts, his two highest totals of the season. Um, he got 16 whiffs in his last start. Nine of those came on the slider. Continues to have some home run issues. Uh, obviously, he faced Aaron Judge. So, I mean, it is what it is. Two home runs in each of his last two starts. Uh, the Red Sox are four and 11 when he starts. Uh, that win being the first since May 1st, it was the uh, May 1st was also the last time the Red Sox scored more than three runs for him. Sheesh. Yeah. Andrew Rabbit, five and six at 342 ERA, a 120 whip and a 6.8 strikeouts per nine. Uh, he had a 9.9 strikeouts per nine in his rookie season last year, and it's obviously gone down quite a bit. Uh, he's allowed 13 home runs this year, only three less than he did last year in 30 less innings. He's got a 476 FIP, which is obviously uh, much higher than his ERA. Uh, he gets smacked around by righties. Um, 12 homers against righties, only one against lefties. The Reds are 7-7 seven and seven when he starts. They are 7-1 and one when they score two-plus runs. Six of their seven losses with him on the mound, the Reds scored one total run. One total run. Fuck yeah. Nick Pavetta, four and four, a 388 ERA, a 113 whip, and a 10 strikeouts per nine. Last four starts for him 23 and a third, 19 hits, nine earned runs, nine walks, 26 strikeouts, three home runs. That's a 347 ERA. Uh, the two home runs in the Blue Jays games didn't hurt him. Uh, he's allowed 10 home runs this year, and seven of them have come in three games. Uh, curveball's been great all year 105 batting average, 158 slug, 24% whiff rate. Uh, his cutter, again, it fucking sucks. His cutter sucks. How has Andrew Bailey not been like, man, we got to not throw the cutter anymore? A 435 batting average and an 1130 slug. Not an OPS. The slugging percentage is 1130 on his cutter. Uh, five of his 10 home runs have been on his cutter. Uh, his last start, he threw 109 pitches and faced 29 batters, both season highs. The Red Sox are six and four when Pavetta starts. They are six and one when scoring one plus run. Um, Frankie Montas, three and five, a 462 ERA, a 193 whip, and a 7.3 strikeouts per nine. He's not very good. Um, I almost wish he stayed with the Yankees. Uh, he faced the Cubs two starts ago, one inning. I mean, the Cubs are not very good. Uh, one inning, no. five hits, four earned, three walks. Uh, two strikeouts, 55 pitches. Uh, he's failed to get an out in the third inning three times this year. Uh, he's only gotten an out in the seventh once this year. Uh, the splitter is his best pitch. Uh, his cutter also sucks. 360 batting average, 560 slug. Uh, the Reds are four and nine when he starts and have lost seven out of his last eight starts. So that is Cutter Crawford versus Andrew Abbott. That is Nick Pavetta versus Frankie Montas and TBD versus TBD on Sunday. Prediction time. Uh, T-Dog. You are fucking muted, dude. I'm sorry. I had to sneeze. Um, I'm going to go two out of three here. Nick okay. Pavetta, 1.7 home run per nine this year. Cutter Crawford actually rocking the exact same home run per nine since May 1st. Don't love that in this ballpark, but with the way the offense is rolling, I think they're going to be able to put up the runs to match it either way. Um, I think they do lose probably the bullpen game. I'm a little worried about how they're going to figure that one out. But if it's bullpen game, bullpen game, who knows? Anything can happen. But give me a Rafael Devers multi-home run game and a Tyler O'Neill multi-home run game. You've actually been drilling these like random predictions, like side predictions. You predicted... Yeah. Justin Turner hitting a home run. You predicted uh, a two homer game for who? Schwarber. Schwarber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another one, too. I don't even remember what it Probably was. Probably Verdugo. Oh, yeah. Verdugo was the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Go Yanks. Cook. Yep. Um, Jake? Uh, should be a pretty textbook sweep for the Red Sox this weekend. <laughs> feel like it just yeah. worked out so well this week. Let's run it back. I could see how you would go sweep the way that yeah. they're playing right now. Five straight wins. Why not keep the good times rolling? I like the pick, Jake. Um, Coley Mick. 
I joined Jake uh, with the sweep for this wow. Blue Jays series. No, no, no. I said I did uh, join him uh, 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 for the Blue Jays uh, series. Uh, 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 and I want to. I really do. But I, I'm kind of where Tyler's at. Just they win Sunday, lose Friday. That's kind of what the Red Sox do. They lose on Fridays. They win on Sundays. Record day, all that. So yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go two out of three. Too many righties against Eli De La Cruz for my liking. Mm. Ella Della, you love him. Uh, I, I don't know how you couldn't. I, I agree. Uh, yeah, the Reds are last place in the NL Central, but they're still only a game and a half out of the last wild card spot because it seems like everybody in the National League is in that same position. <laughs> Tenth in Team ERA, twenty first in Team OPS. I like two out of three. I like two out of three in this one. Cutter Crawford coming off a 9K performance against the Yanks. That ties a career high for him. Nick Pavetta has a 292 ERA in his career against the Reds for whatever that's worth in seven appearances. One of his best ERAs against any team in the majors. And I like Duran with multiple triples in this series. So get those nipples ready, Tyler. Wow. They'll be ready. Vacation oh. nipples. Ooh, Cape yeah. Cod nips. Here we go. Beach yeah. nips. Beach. I will say yeah. too. What? Diaz sucks out of the bullpen. Like he like going into the ninth against them, the game is still very much in play. Um, I'm gonna go two out of three. I'm gonna go loss, win, win. Sunday Sox don't lose. Montas stinks, and we don't. Very rarely do we want to win baseball games. A cutter is pitching. Um. I will win. add with Abbott in that first game, Tyler O'Neill back. They have been crushing lefties. Sweep feels overzealous. I, I feel like Jake can go straight. sweep here, but like when you're when you're on a five game winning streak, I, it's I can't I personally can't go sweep. I would like I th- do I think a sweep is on the table? I do, but I'm just I'm I'm reading between the lines here, Steve. Uh, if they do sweep, I will send a listener Section 10 shirt. So we'll put Ooh. that on the line for a sweep. Wow. Okay. Section Eight 10 in a shirt. row would be, that would be a yeah. thing to celebrate. Yeah. Section10merch.com for your Section 10 merch. Um, Steve, the, uh, what's the weather going to be like there? Weather look ahead. Brought to you by Billy's Gummy Bears. You're chewing with your mouth. Red Sox have only played 10 regular season games ever in Cincinnati. They are 8-2 and two in those games, so get excited for either 2 out of 3 or a sweep. Again, shirt on the line. Friday, game 1, 7, 10 p.m., first pitch, 91 degrees, Jeez. partly cloudy, 5-mile-an-hour winds, a 0% chance of rain. That is going to be tough. Saturday, 4, 10 p.m., Eastern first pitch. It gets hotter, 94 degrees, and it feels like 101. Mm. So watch the hell out for that. Partly cloudy, eight mile an hour winds, 2% chance of rain. Cools off a little bit on Sunday, 1.40 p.m. first pitch. Finally, an afternoon series finale. Thank you. 88 degrees, cloudy, 10 mile an hour winds, 17% chance of rain. There is a chance thunderstorms will roll in towards the end of the game. So let's have a nice quick W on Sunday. That will do it. For your weather look ahead, which is brought to you by Billy's Gummy Bears, you got to chew them with your mouth. I noticed that you, for any of these games, you did not say that it would be seventy six degrees. Not, not even close. close. Yep. Why? Because uh, I'm just reporting the facts. You know. Okay. All right. Yep. That's a fair answer. Mm-hmm. I root uh, for seventy six. Just so you yeah. know, like I like yeah. delivering that news to you. Yeah, me too. This is a rough stretch of the season to get seventy sixes. Mm. Yeah, you can, we're but we're getting into crazy territory, as you mm-hmm. can see in Cincy. Yeah, no, I feel that. I agree. Um, all right. Uh, final thoughts, T Dog. Miserable week for us prospect lovers. Luis Perales, Tommy John surgery. The minute we start being happy and excited about you know him jumping up in rankings across the board, dominating, getting up to Double A, gone. Angel Bastardo, obviously not the same tier prospect, but another arm that. You know, was starting in double A, but seemed to have good reliever potential. Also likely having Tommy John surgery. Miguel Blaise has missed the last couple days with a finger sprain as well. On the positive side, Christian Campbell, Eastern League Player of the Week. Second week in double A. Get excited. Start to freak out. Hit another homer. He's now up to three. 
he's moved up to double A and it's not even a challenge. He's hitting better there than he did at high A. Um, so that's the name you should watch for helium and things going nuts. And fortunately, big three wise, Anthony, Meyer, Teal, all are swinging it. Meyer was out a couple days with some leg soreness or whatever, came back today with a couple big hits. So at least the big three are doing their thing, but rough, uh, rough couple days on, you know, the prospect front where Perel is going down. Yeah. Uh, Coley, final thoughts? Yeah, rest in peace, Willie Mays. Um, 23, 23 people did not vote for Willie Mays to make the Hall of Fame. Oof. Uh, and people, I've seen some people be like, well, they don't like to do the unanimous shit. That really wasn't the case back then. That wasn't how they were thinking. That was just blatant racism. Uh, I don't know how you can watch Willie Mays and be like, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see I don't it. <laughs> I don't Listen, a war hero, 660 home run. I just it, uh, I don't see it. This isn't now. the Hall of Very Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hall of Fame. Come on now. This is the best of the best. <laughs> I, uh, I, I've said it before on here. I've said it a couple places. I think based on time all star, like, uh, <laughs> but like played 22 seasons. Yeah. <laughs> 22 seasons made more all star games than seasons. Uh, but I've, I've made the case before. I don't know that there's someone with a more ironclad case for the goat of baseball. If you talk about Barry Bonds, people will bring up allegations. If you talk about Babe Ruth, people will talk about the fact that he played against people who look like this show. Uh, so I, <laughs> he killed his wife. Yeah, that's right, Jared. Uh, Willie Mays, you can't do any of that. No, there's nothing you can say. Even his highlights, despite being in black and white, look like someone playing today. Like the same mm. athleticism, same everything. Like he was insanely talented should have had more mvps again due to what i was talking about before with the racism there uh so rest in peace they're having that game in birmingham is that this tomorrow. week tomorrow tomorrow today when people listen today. to it um and yeah he he said he couldn't make it it's far travel for anybody to go from san francisco to birmingham alabama and he he didn't even make it to see the game on tv so rest in peace willie mays again the most ironclad case in my estimation for greatest baseball player of all time. It's facts. Um, Steve, final thoughts? Yeah, I learned a very valuable lesson. I uh, went to game five with my wonderful girlfriend, Elaine, and it was, you know, one of the best nights ever. Saw Jake was there as well. We're both champions. I learned the lesson that you don't have to record everything. I love recording moments and trying to capture big plays. I like tweeting them out. I love it. I, I get hyped about it. I like posting it. I think people like seeing it, and it's a ton of fun. Peyton Pritchard hits that three from half court. It caught me by surprise. It caught the Mavs by surprise. I understand Pritchard does this, but I thought there was less time on the clock than there actually was, and I didn't have time to record it. And instead... <laughs> I just experienced an awesome moment in person. Everyone was going nuts, shoving each other, high-fiving strangers. It's crazy. And it reminds me, Steve, you don't have to record everything. When you're at the game, you don't have to be rolling on everything. Enjoy being at these events. Enjoy the big moments and live more in the moment instead of just needing to take your phone out and document every single thing that happens. Also, one thing I wanted to add on, any team that shoots confetti off for anything but a championship, you're a loser. When that confetti went off at the Garden, it hit me, right, I've never seen this. Like, I've never seen a Boston team do this because they don't do it, because that's what losers do. You shoot confetti off when you win a title. That's what the Seas did. Creates for great videos, images, all of that. That's when you start rolling the, the, the phone and the, and the camera on that stuff. So just live more in the moment and enjoy these games that you go to, folks, especially it's at Yankee Stadium. Yes. Shout out game time app, promo code section 10, get $20 off your first purchase of the Yankee ticket. Uh, Jake's takes. Tyler, just wanted to double check that you can make it to the NASCAR thing on Sunday because Yankees are playing at one thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I will do my best to be there, uh, but I may have the game up on my phone. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> He's just asking, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's being a considerate friend. Yeah. Dick. If Ben Rice is in the lineup, I'll definitely be watching. Are you coming, Coley? We'll find it's game day. We're we're day to day right now. Okay. Big time day to day. Day to day. Uh, so oh, with number three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The trace. The trace. Big three. Yeah. 
Yeah. Little Trace. The Thrice. El Trace. Mm-hmm. Thirteen. Uh, I'll be there. Very excited. That's my final thought. Uh, yeah, I know that's Hanley Ramirez's <laughs> nickname. Um, Thirteenth kid. Uh, yeah, NASCAR on Sunday in New Hampshire. It's my first NASCAR thing. We're gonna be there for uh, BuildSubmarines.com because Not motocross. <laughs> yeah. No. Skirt. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, that, is that is a little more. No, no, motocross. it's not I drive cars. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Step back. I'm I'm willing to learn a lot this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's gonna be a learning experience. So I'm very excited for it. Uh, we will be making a vlog of our first NASCAR experience with uh, BuildSubmarines.com. It's gonna be uh, like I don't know what to expect. I I'm I'm going into this just completely open minded. Anything could happen, and I'll be ready for it. Tyler, I'm honestly hoping they let us drive one of the cars. That's probably not. Can't happen. imagine. No. That. No. Am I shooting too high? Not, not gonna, and we That's shouldn't. Like, like it's 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 NASCAR. <laughs> it's not like we know someone who like races <laughs> no. and a random. T- it's like imagine like taking Tyler to his first Red Sox team. He's like, I I hope I I get in a bat or something. <laughs> kind, of, kind of cool if I at least play in the field for an inning. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> you think they'll let me pitch or no? <laughs> I get a couple laps at this. It's race. my first what? game. It's my first game. How, you're not going to make a special for T Dogs. I mean, I don't want to say this in Tyler's defense, but like, kind of to your point, Jared, I've never had less of an idea of what to expect for a sport yeah. event. I have no clue, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and we're all experiencing it for the first time together, which will be part of the beauty of it. Mm. So. And it doesn't run up against the game seven, which I'm thankful for. Celtics were the like, Yankees? you know what? No, this the Sox. Uh, the uh, Sox. Jeez. The, uh, the Sox game seven. Celtics game seven was going to be Sunday, but uh, okay, they're like, nah. I was we'll never on the cards. Yeah, that was, was absolutely happen. no chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, we'll be back here on Sunday for the Reds podcast episode with also some uh, fallout from Tyler and ours first uh, NASCAR experience complete with a vlog that'll be out in the coming days. Uh, enjoy your day off, everyone. You guys deserve it. Um, and we'll see you right back here for more of the 10 on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Buenas noches, amigos.